It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. We got a great show and a big announcement at the beginning. Stay tuned. We'll also talk about Apple's earnings and what it means for the iPhone going forward. Amazon taking over. RIP the dash button. Lowcast gets sued. And China is using your smile to pay. It's all coming up next. And a big announcement. Did I mention that? On Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit. This Week at Tech, episode 730, recorded Sunday, August 4th, 2019. Moonlighting as Marshmallow. This Week at Tech is brought to you by Eero. Never think about Wi-Fi again when you can have a brilliant, hyper-fast, super simple Wi-Fi setup with Eero. Go to eero.com slash twit and enter the code twit at checkout to get free overnight shipping with your order. And by Crest. The Crest 3D Whitening Kit removes over 10 years of tough, set-in stains to give you noticeably whiter teeth, 100% guaranteed. For $20 off your first Crest 3D Whitening Strip Kit, go to CrestWhiteSmile.com and enter the promo code TWIT at checkout. And by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products, introducing the new Casper Hybrid Mattresses, featuring their award-winning foam layers now combined with springs. Get $100 off select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash TWIT1 and using the promo code TWIT1 at checkout. And by LastPass, the number one most preferred password manager. Just remember your master password, and LastPass remembers the rest. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the week's tech news. I have a kind of an intro. We have a, th a theme panel. First of all, all in studio, all drunk. That's a good start. <laughs> and cheers to everybody. Cheers. Uh, I want to introduce Mike Elgin, who represents... Twit past yes. on this episode. The ghost. The ghost of Twit, Twit past. past. <laughs> Mike, of course, at Elgin.com, his very insightful, deep thinking pieces at Computer World and others, other places. Thank you. Always love having you in. Well, you didn't bring Kevin today, care. though. I did. He's right there. Oh, hi, Kevin. Yes. How's the how's the new company doing? Great, great. Yeah, you're raising money and all that. We'll give you a big plug at the uh, Indiegogo. As yeah. of today. Today, today it went today. up on Indiegogo. Yep. Good. Oh, nice. All right, we'll mention that. This, he's doing it for kids, a um, Kind of your very own echo for kids so that you can understand how they work and build it yourself. And it's really cool. Yeah. What's the name of it? Chatterbox. Chatterbox. It's a, we've given you your plug. Go to India. There it is. <laughs> also with us, Twit Present, our newest hire for the next minute. Yes. My, <laughs> my, Micah Sargent, wonderful to have you. Finally moved out here from St. Joe, Missouri. He is a part of our team now with iOS Today, Tech News Weekly. But I see you already ready to launch... Like two new shows? Well, we'll see. We'll oh, see. Oh, I'm excited. I can't secret, wait. Secret secrets. Secret secrets. Uh, and Mike, you have, uh, Micah, you have something in common with our next guest. Oh, yeah? You both own Chihuahuas. <gasps> yeah, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Twit Future and actually now Twit Present. I want to introduce to you our newest hire. We're really thrilled to get Aunt Pruitt on the team. Uh, we are... I've always been big fans of Ant uh, and all his work at Tech Republic, his uh, videos, the Friday night videos, his photography, and your your wife and your kids are here, and um, we're just so grateful. Hi, they're moving out here also, like you. They're moving out from, uh, in, your, in their case, from Carolina, and it's uh, really great from North Carolina. Great Thank time. You. Welcome, Thank Ant. You. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Congratulations. And in honor of Ant, we are pouring, Cheers. you better say it, Abelauer, Abelauer, Abudna, Abelauer, Abudna. That's a Single whiskey, malt, Scotch whiskey. Because he's a whiskey, he's, he's a whiskey fan. But we also yes. are pouring a little Louis the Thirteenth brandy for yes. those who prefer. <laughs> and you can, and of course, Ant gets both. So get ready for a really fun show. Oh my goodness! <laughs> anyway, this is a big deal. Welcome, Ant. Thank you, Thank everybody, you. for bringing. Uh, Yay. It, we're really thrilled to have Ant Pruitt uh, join us on Twitter, and. Lisa says we're not done. We're trying to. What we're trying to do is build a network of great contributors, great uh, tech people. In fact, there's always room for you too, Mike, if you want to come back. Thanks. But uh, I know Mike's traveling all over the world. But we really we think that there's a real opportunity here, 
And since I hear podcasting is having a renaissance, I thought, <laughs> sure seems like it. Now's the time. We should take advantage of the renaissance. Anyway, we're, I think we're not done. I think we, we're hoping to get one more host. One more host in mind. And uh, when we get her, I mean him, I mean her. Uh, <laughs> they. They. they we get them. I don't know what pronoun they use. Uh, we'll let you know about that, but we're really excited. So thank you, everybody, for uh, putting up with a little bit of inside twit as we get under way i don't know what to talk about uh today so apple's much. third quarter results they made some money shocking big surprise um i love what jason snell does and uh he always uh does these color graphs total app and revenue now you see that drop but you also see it's a spiky thing and in fact the revenue isn't bad considering uh it's a uh what, what apple calls q q uh three i think um, their big quarter is, of course, in September. It'll be next quarter yeah. right, when the iPhone comes out. Um, so this is this is the qu the quarter before the iPhone. Um, I think the big story is service revenue, which we knew was going up, um, went up a lot. It's now twenty one percent. In fact, if you look at this pie chart, what's really interesting is the iPhone for the first time in a long time is less than half of Apple's total revenue. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a pretty big deal. We haven't seen that in so long. And that is, of course, what folks who are looking for a story kind of latched on to here. I mean, that is a big deal. And it kind of speaks to what we've seen as the narrative of Apple going forward, where we're not seeing as much money from the iPhone, where we're having to look in, in other places. Apple has been saying services, services, services nonstop in their earnings reports for quite some time now. And so it's no surprise to me that we're seeing 21% of the revenue coming from that. But I think that the bigger story here and the thing that other people were kind of paying attention to is wearables accounts for quite a bit. It's now, wearables in. for Apple is not just wearables. It's the home pub, home pod. It's the AirPods. Airpo 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 it's a yes. bunch of. It's kind of a catch-all for. Uh, it's almost should be called other rather than. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. The, what's interesting? Watch. Yeah, what's interesting about wearables is these are accessories to iPhones. So they they've monetized the heck out of iPhones. Mm -hmm. They they made you know they. Apple is what it is today because of iPhones, and now as iPhones kind of plateau and even decline a little bit, the. Accessories to iPhones are uh, doing great stuff for them, and then the next big thing I think, which is going to be way huger than people think, is the Apple credit card, which hits. That'll later go this into month. services. That goes into services, but I think the potential there is gigantic. Yeah, I don't think it's next month. I think it's soon. I yeah. think it's any minute now. Yeah, maybe even <laughs> as this show ends, it will have an announcement. Yeah. But I, I think probably next week they're going to announce the. Uh, titanium apple credit card you could really safely say services is an accessory for the iphone you could yeah, yeah absolutely you know, but it's way. but it's not just for the iphone i think that's the mac of, too but, well no no i don't even mean it's not just apple stuff that's the one thing is that we see we see siri we see apple kind of diversifying here where they are reaching out to sort of offer their services on third parties so we've got these smart tvs now that work with with um home kit that work with airplay 2 and they have apple tv and built they have in. apple tv app yeah. built in apple yeah. is no longer well in in some cases it's no longer especially with its services trying to play in this walled garden and i think that's because the company kind of knows hey we've got to look at other ways to make money so do y'all not think it's a cyclical effect with the hardware because i want to say about three years ago we were saying that about the ipad and now, we were it was dying right you know but now phones are, are a little more more robust now and you have a lot more longevity so why do you have to spend a thousand dollars every two years four yeah. years Ant. that's what that's what they're saying that it is the average for people now they're hanging they on to their, their phones phone for four, four years. years and this yeah. is just like the ipad like the problem with the ipad is it's too good yeah. You get one. And I keep mine great. for about four months. Well, that's <laughs> well, that's you, you though. <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem, Leo. This, in fact, this is an intervention. We yeah. brought you. Oh, thank <laughs> God! You finally. You that's stopped. why it's packed here. Well, I'm actually nervous because next month is phone month, right? Where this week we're going to get the Note right. 10 announced. Yep. Uh, next, uh, probably I'm going to guess September 10th. Apple mm -hmm. have an event announced three new iPhones. Yeah. There'll be a Google Pixel 4 probably shortly after that, and then IFA's coming in September. There'll probably be a bunch of phones there. And I'm going to be spending thousands of dollars. You're buying them on, all. Oh, you got I a hate problem. That. I you hate problem, this man. time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you hate yeah, it. Yeah, you sound. No, in fact, Lisa will, will back me up on this. I said last year, I don't want to buy a new phone. She said, you, no, you're going to. You have to. You have to. Because yeah. you have to talk about it. I don't like the idea of spending $1,000 on a phone. It's what, that, what, just, right. Oh, and it, and you know like what? That. I wouldn't mind this $1,000 if it were like 
Oh, light years better. I'm getting the new thing. Right. It's the same freaking phone. Yeah. You know? I yeah. can't run Premiere on this. I can't run After Effects on this. It's not worth Well, you have different dollars. needs than a normal human. Well, yes, I am. Because I'm not your average human. Yeah, but but I, ha <laughs> I have to say, in some ways, the Note 10 is going to be a lesser phone. It's not going to have a headphone jack, according to the renders, which really pisses me off. Well, the Pixel 4 isn't going to have the dedicated wide-angle lens either, um, but it'll have Soli, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, Soli, tell me about Soli. Take. What's yeah. Soli? Soli is radar that, that shoots out from the top of the phone that enables in-the-air gestures and also face recognition. So unlike the iPhone, which when you swipe it, it recognizes your face and turns on, the Pixel 4, you just pick it up and it turns on. You don't have to swipe anything. So it's way easier. <laughs> no more swiping. Allegedly. But but it also... Um, this is the one where we're going to look like idiots going like this. We are. We are, Leo. <laughs> oh, to our phones, we're we waving, are. we're dancing. Yeah. Semaphores. To the Macarena. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> YMCA. Yeah, why? I wish it did that. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be right above the phone. You'll be able to pause and, and, and go to the next song and, and silence the phone. So you wave to go right. to the next song. Now, what's, what's the difference report? between that and going like this to the next song or pause? Well, this actually involves contact, whereas this... You're right. It hurts yeah, my just, finger yeah, to touch the screen. Right. Oh, I so really much wish work. it too. Yeah. So much oh. work. I hate it. But I'm what, sure there's a reason. Right? But what's cool about Soli is we, we've seen a lot of technologies that come out for uh, in-the-air gestures. They haven't really taken off. Um, some have been sort of built into laptops. Some have been, you know, standalone devices. Is it Magic Leap, one of those companies? Uh, yeah. Not Magic Leap, but there's another one. I forgot what it's called. It's Leap Motion or something Leap like Motion. that. Leap Motion oh, is the one yeah. Apple yeah. bought that does hand gestures. Didn't really come uh, take off because it didn't come from Apple or Google. Or I one have of the one companies. in my closet. It's yeah. like I never used it. It was dopey. Right. Yeah. The I don't Leap really motion? need it. Yeah. No, the... <sighs> See, this is the confusing. There's the, the Leap... Magic Leap is the one you wear on your eyes. Yeah, the right. Leap Motion is the little lozenge you put between your keyboard right. and the screen. Yeah, the that's problem the with it, they're trying your to hand kick gestures. kickstart a whole world of gestures and, and habits and things like that. It makes more sense if it's built in the Absolutely. phone. Absolutely. I have to say one thing that's interesting is, is Google apparently, and they've been pretty open about the Pixel 4 this time around, isn't going to use a notch. You're just going to have a fairly big bezel up at the top. Which I like. All totally these cameras. Like there's the multiple too, cameras. Yeah. There's Soli. There's the projector for the face recognition. They're going to... Put a lot of stuff. It's a lot in there, it, but yeah. not a wide angle lens. So they're <laughs> going to do the wide angle sort of in software. It's going to be slightly wider. Right. Uh, the, the, the selfie camera is going to be slightly wider than the one in the front, but well, not Google, like the current Pixel. Google has proven proven it's pretty strong when it comes to to computational photography. So yeah. I, I don't mind that they're not putting that extra lens in there if they can figure out yeah. from an AI standpoint. They've done a lot with a single lens in the Pixel Three. Exactly. That's, a, that's what you use, right? right. Yeah, Pixel that's a great three. camera. I was pleasantly surprised. I was visiting uh, the Google campus in San Francisco. Uh, one of my friends works there, and nice. she took some photos of us. You know, just with their phone. Now we know where the your are the... coming from, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what where was I got the name it. again. Uh, and yeah, I didn't say the name. Yeah, you know why. No uh, and I, she sent me the Google Photos library link or whatever, and those photos looked incredible. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, there's just something about being able to snap and boop and be done with it versus mm -hmm. where with my iPhone, yes, it might make the more accurate photo, but I'm not necessarily after the accurate photo because I'm going to end up hitting that edit do this, 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 and this right. button to it. I kind of like the computational if it's going to give me a photo that I'd like to share immediately. My wife has an iPhone 10, and she's always borrowing my camera, my phone, to take pictures. <laughs> but she knows it's going to be a much better picture. And you're a pro photographer. There's, no, I mean, do you, are you at the point now where you think a, a camera phone is as good as you need it to be? Well, my photo of the week, this previous week, was taken with my phone. No kidding. And Where is that? Where can people I find that? definitely seem to like it. It's over on Instagram.com slash Ant Pruitt. Yeah. He took but a picture of his camera. Yes, I did. <laughs> it's, breathtaking. it's breathtaking. <laughs> no, but we were we were on our family vacation. Um, this flower one? Well, yeah, that one too. But the that's one, with the phone. That's beautiful. Look at the color and the detail. And it's almost a macro shot, mm -hmm. right? Look at the background. Is uh, the softness of the background? And the one before that. And this one you is. See, and I did more beautiful. processing on it, but that's with the. That's what the pixel. Yeah. yeah, I have to say we we went to the uh, Peruvian, the Inca ruins Machu Picchu a couple of years ago, and I brought a 360 degree camera. I brought my <laughs> Canon with a Mark IV uh, with all the lenses. I brought all this stuff. We got up at sunrise. You carried we, all that heavy I stuff. I carried up all the this hill, stuff. Right? The one best picture charged. I got was a Pixel Two. Yeah, mm. it was 
Far and away the best picture of Machu yeah. Picchu. Well, wow. here's the other thing. I, I think the killer feature of the Pixel 3 is the uh, the ability to take pictures when people smile or do things like that. So one of the things I do is we do, as we're traveling around, we do a lot of things with various people. We're cooking and making stuff like that. I just set it up. Get it going and forget about it. Right. And after we're done, I have like 30 pictures. Oh, yeah, you did that the last right. time you were yeah. here. That was wild. Everybody's smiling and laughing. And so you happy. put it on a tripod, you put it yeah. there, and you said every once in a while, look at it and smile. Right. Well, <laughs> even, if, even if I don't say that, people will They're going to do that. Right, exactly. And and you, it, those are better pictures when you're taking people shots. Yeah, candid, right? So, you, so I never did see the pictures you got when you were here last. So that, what's nice is those are more like action shots. Those are like... Those are like, uh, they're the kind of pictures you want for personal stuff, not for professional shots. Right. You want, that's candid stuff. I don't actually I mean, want people to smile in my serious photos. <laughs> I want them to frown. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I, I think the point is, because I carry a serious. Sony uh, a7 III as well, um, it, it, sometimes a, a, a high-end camera takes the better shot, and sometimes the phone takes the better shot. It depends on the light, the context, the yep. situation. You can whip a phone out and take a picture just like that, whereas you can't get your regular camera out fast enough. Right. So I use both all the time, and sometimes the better shot is one, and sometimes it's the other. Yeah. You got to have both. Wow, look at that. This is That's so. I'm I'm not kidding. I brought a ton of gear up. This is the Pixel Two. Pixel Two. That's beautiful. Goodness. The detail, the clarity, the crispness. Uh, I. The point really, though, is it's the camera you have, and yeah, and it's there at the right moment. It's and right this there was with the you. perfect moment where the sun had just come up, and blah blah blah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's great that these cameras are so good in the phone. I burn a lot of calories carrying around. I noticed you have your sixty though. Thirty you pounds of yeah. Gear you didn't, you didn't leave your sixty me. at home, even oh, though you have no. the Pixel Three. Oh no, I bring yeah. you everything, but <laughs> but but I still get it. You. you if the phone is in your pocket, just whip it out and shoot. Mm -hmm. and By the works. way, another thing I noticed, there's a little bit of orange in the set today. Oh, yeah. What is all this? Such it's, a beautiful color. It's Clemson you know? orange today. Yes. I don't know where all that came didn't from. Know. I didn't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this this is when, some when, sort of when we were thing. talking about hiring <laughs> you, uh, Lisa said, what about Ant? I said, I love Ant. I would love to hire Ant, but he's never leaving Clemson. He's never leaving North Carolina. At one point, you were right about that. <laughs> All right. His kids asked me, How, which college football team do you favor? What? What are you talking about? College football? What are you talking about? What is that? What's that? The California is I'm a this. Clemson fan, Isaiah. I'm a Clemson fan. That's what you <laughs> mm. What am I drinking coffee for? I'm really oh, no. So let's go back and look at iPad <laughs> revenue. You mentioned iPad, and there were there was a really kind of drop in the iPad revenue from the fourth quarter 2017 through the fourth quarter 2018 down to you know it just drop 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 and then it suddenly turned around it's still cyclical and it's going it's cyclical <laughs> but it's but it's an eight percent growth year over year this quarter 22 percent so ipad i think this is the ipad pro clearly right. the ipad pro max sales revenue up 11 percent year over year so there's some strength in apple's hardware business but yeah, obviously iPhone is the problem. iPhone's driven Apple for so yeah. long. I hear so many people talking about using the iPad as a hundred percent work device. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, and I don't think I could ever do it. It always it's, feels to me, and we often have people on set using. Jason Snell's a good example using their iPad Pro. And I always feel we talked about this on iOS today. I always feel like they're sacrificing. They're like, mm -hmm. uh, no, I can do it. Honest. Yeah. I mean, you say it's one of those things where you awkwardly wait. They're like, no, no, just give no, me a no, second. I got it. I got it. And, you're just and like, then, oh my God. and now they're all excited because uh, iOS uh, 13, you have a mouse, yeah. and it's this big round dot on the screen. It's like, come oh, on, guys. Man. There's a mouse in your laptop. It doesn't do a. I just, I don't understand why people, maybe they just, is it, it's not lighter once, in fact, you and I both bought the bridge keyboard, Micah, and. Yeah, it's heavy. It's like, why not just use a laptop yeah, at that point? It's yeah. laptop weight, yeah. I didn't, the iPad really, I didn't necessarily like the um, uh, file system, quote unquote. That is the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the hidden file system. Right, yeah. I, I couldn't figure out if I wanted to work on a raw file where it was. Right. Oh, wait a minute, you downloaded That's been to me this the, app. The yeah. biggest problem is the raw workflow. Because mm -hmm. I actually have to say, a 12.9 inch iPad is a good, for a photographer, the, the screen's great. Beautiful screen's amazing. screen. Yeah. And being able to manipulate with your fingers or the pencil, mm -hmm. uh, you can reject if you're using Lightroom, Lightroom reject, room. you know, go and boom, boom, boom. pencil and Lightroom, and touch sensitivity is... A beautiful but a bunch flow. of times I've been but thinking finding your files. I've been working on the raw and it's the JPEG. It's just like it's a little yeah. I think that can be solved. One day. I think one day. 
Well, it, Apple hopes it'll be in the yeah, fall. I mean, we've we've seen some improvements made with the uh, finally that's coming. Finally, and iOS 13 is coming. The support to uh, you can plug in a USB C flash drive, or you can plug in a, a, a dock and then plug in your USB drive or whatever you want there. And there's some direct import into different apps features available now that maybe were not available in the past and some new shortcuts and things like that. So there are improvements that are being made in that area because I too, whenever I'm doing photo editing, I like to use Pixelmator Photo. Um, and Leo, we talked about how you, someone had asked us if there was going to be Photoshop on the iPad and or on, I, on iPad. Yeah. And we had kind of talked about how you don't really need it because there's so many great oh, apps. Affinity. And that, and Affinity. And Pixelmator yeah. Photo is excellent on Amazing. there. Amazing. Have you used Pixelmator Photo? I've played around with it's it. It's incredible. I've used Affinity more. Affinity yeah, Affinity is really, nice. really powerful. It's also hard to use. It's kind of a lot of menus and it's it's getting there but once you know it they've put a lot into yeah, it and yeah. it's, it's a viable competitor to people That's that don't want to spend the the monthly adobe subscription yeah. fee i know? think I, I think everybody i'm sure you are looking for a way out from the creative cloud i can't i can't i, I love the dynamic link especially when i'm using premiere pro yeah <clears throat> excuse me and i want to work on a motion graphic or something i literally just right click and jump into they have After the suite. Effects. It's a suite, and right. it all integrates nicely together. It's it's so good. Or You're if I need a to monthly fix fee, audio, it just yeah. hops over to audition. audition. It yeah. is, that's that's what keeps me in. It's that link. There was a rumor. I don't know if I credit this that Apple might buy Adobe. And does that make it? Does that make any sense? <laughs> no, Adobe's not having. It's not that. the kind of acquisition Apple makes. No. They, they like to buy little companies. small companies that can easily up. integrate. Hire the people. Yep. Forget the company. Yep. I give Adobe credit because I can remember. I think it was 2016 or 2017. I was at Adobe Max and in the press event or whatever, people were just badgering him about the whole subscription process yeah. because <laughs> you have Capture One and Affinity. And Capture One, you buy outright. Right. And and the CEO just looked straight at him. He said. This is what's working. You can take it or leave right. it. Right. You know? Right. Right. It's right. He's like, yeah, we're going to shut this down right now. This is the subscription plan. People we're, are still buying it. In. Yeah. So. And now Microsoft's moving in that direction. Everybody's moving in the subscription direction. Yep. I, I yeah. Don't think all my apps are <laughs> subscriptions now. I know. Now. Customers, <laughs> yeah, on iOS. It's yeah. all. And I don't think anybody likes it except the companies. On the other hand, maybe it's a little more realistic because the companies, it's crazy to sell a product for $5 and support it for five years. Yeah. That right. just doesn't make any sense. I think it clarifies how much you like the app, though. Some there are some, True. and they're like, "Oh, this here's I'm, I happily pay it because I love it." And then yeah. others like, "Not worth it." Yeah. So it's like you really have to think about whether it's bringing value to yep. your life, and uh, if it isn't, yeah. I thought yeah. the most interesting number Tim Cook uh, or Tim Apple is Tim, Tim Apple, Apple is widely known. <laughs> yeah, please, uh, Tim Apple. To Tim Apple brought up at the uh, at quarterly event is the R and D spending. Mm. Which is through the roof. Apple's yeah. been criticized for years for not spending enough on R and D. They are spending enough for R and D. The largest proportion of revenue in R and D since two thousand three. It's an all time high. They spent four point two billion dollars in the quarter, seven point nine percent of its total revenue, and they're on pace to spend sixteen billion dollars this year. <laughs> sixteen Man. billion. What are they spending it on? What is Apple working on? Clearly, they want a successor to the iPhone. Yeah, but what is that? Is that a? <laughs> That's why they're spending the money. They a, don't know yet. What is that? Right. A propeller cap that you could fly around with? Oh my god, I don't know. I'm sold for sure. I'd buy that. Yeah, you'd have an to really Apple hold on tight. An cap. Apple branded espresso machine. <laughs> I'm on it. Part of it is the them bringing in house things that they would normally get as a component. A billion dollars for Intel's exactly, uh, for uh, engineers modems, and IP. Exactly that sort of thing. So that's very expensive. What, one of the interesting. Do you think a lot of this, the bulk of this, is Apple saying? We're going to make all our chips. We're going to do ARM chips. We're going to do 5G radios. Mm. We're going to do it all. That's got to be expensive. Is that what most of this money is being I spent? I do, and I think, I think the larger sense. theme is yeah. that they're trying to do things that other companies can't do because they've, they've learned that, you know, they come out with these laptops. They can't trust Intel. Them. And, and Intel also, to, Intel let them down. It's so uh, that's exactly true, and and it's so difficult uh, for them to differentiate in this market because the copycats mm -hmm. uh, coming out of China and elsewhere are, are really just sort of muddy the waters in terms of you know. And so they want to be able that's to true, do by lots the way, of, not just for Apple for every that's business. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. In America, that's true. But they want to they want to be able to differentiate in a way that's really clear. And so the way to do that is through technology. One, one interesting thing about uh, R&D spending that I, I love mentioning because it's always a shocker to people, but the number one spender on R&D is Amazon by far. They spend far more than Apple. Yeah. And you think, wow, 
What's a bookstore doing? You know, obviously, they're doing <laughs> more than a yeah. bookstore. More than a bookstore. <laughs> but, but people have to realize how intense the technology play at Amazon is. How they're yeah. trying to reinvent the future. Look what they did with the Amazon Echo. They want to have a home Less robot. Less of a surprise for Bezos, who is always too. willing to spend yeah. profits on the next thing. That's right. right. In fact, this was always the knock on Amazon. They never show a profit. In fact, right. the, at one point, the market said, "We're not going to put any more money into you." They had to actually borrow. Yeah. But it was. It turned out to be the right strategy. Right. They built all those fulfillment centers. Now, what do you think they're doing now? What is their? Well, they're they're working on that home robot, but they're they're trying to get. <laughs> oh, Jesus! You know, <laughs> it's going to be Rosie the. You know, I don't no, want. Rosie you want a robot. home robot? Nobody um, wants a home robot. That's oh, I do. That's it's, reading sci-fi and saying, "Oh, this would be good." If it'll work on scotch how it for looks. me, yeah. <laughs> what is it going to do? If or your scotch? If, if it's like a Roomba <laughs> that can also, I don't know, feed my the dogs Roomba's or something. The Roomba's dopey. Well, yes, but it still vacuums. Roomba is dopey. It still vacuums, though, and Cats I, it makes like me not them. have to do it. Cats true. like to According ride to YouTube. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, YouTube might say that. I don't know. If I mean, it's true I think though. I think they were strongly encouraged by what happened with the Echo. So what happened was they came out with this, and uh, they didn't expect it. Now, no, they came out with what we now call a smart speaker. It used to be like an, uh, uh, an an assistant appliance, and they owned the market for two years. That that's something only Apple used to do. When right. Apple came out with the iPad, yep. there was no tablet yep. other than the iPad for two years. And Amazon did that with the Echo, and they're thinking, okay, we can change consumer behavior. We can change how people live if we have the right technology. Well, everybody's looking for, look what the iPhone did in 10 years. I mean, um, unbelievable. In yeah. 2007, from now, from then till now, we see people walking around, staring at their phone. Every yeah. family goes mm -hmm. to dinner. Walking they're all looking traffic, at their phone. The white ear, earbuds. I mean, you're always connected all the time, no matter mm -hmm. where you are. It's built a surveillance economy on second to none. I mean, they, talk about this may be this uh, equal to the steam engine in yeah. terms of an invention that changes society. Right. And it's done it in 12 years. So everybody wants the next that's right iPhone. Mm -hmm. But that's I don't know if you can I don't know if you can sit down at the drawing board and say let's make the next iPhone. Yeah. I don't think you can. I wonder how much investment in R&D or research is Amazon doing for us their logistics just from mm -hmm. looking at where they've come from in the last 10 years or that's so. That's where you'd put your money if they're going to be a uh, So I guess some of that comes down to well what is Bezos's real mission statement. And I, I read somebody, I think it was probably Ben Thompson saying, to own a fraction of every financial transaction yep. in Ooh. America. Oh, cute. Right? So anytime you buy something, Bezos gets a penny. Right. That uh, adds up. Just a little I, ambitious. Yeah, I've heard rumors that they're they're looking at buying, they already own Whole Foods, they're looking at buying other chains or yeah, building other start food chains. And they, they want all the food to come from Although, Amazon. Although there's a little uh, hitch in the get along there, didn't I think San Francisco and some other cities are starting to ban cash, uh, no cash businesses. Hmm. That you yeah, have. I think it was San Francisco yeah. that passed that. Yeah. Because it's not everybody has a card, has right. a phone, has a watch. Right. You're you're disadvantaging a huge swath of the population who wants mm -hmm. to just come in with five bucks and buy a potato chip. That's right. And and purchase anonymously, which cash right. anonymous. Yeah. So and but that's going to hurt those grab and go stores. All the stuff that Amazon's been playing with but this isn't the first time amazon's been yeah. hurt they they killed this week they killed the dash button mm -hmm. yes because germany said eh, you can't <laughs> thank you germany germany said <laughs> the, the dash button doesn't give consumer enough warning, warning that he just it. bought something right. and i know this because remember I lisa like when we got button. so we got a, a dash button for toilet paper because i, I thought a bunch you, of them you should those. put that next to the toilet except it won't come put it fast between enough. the seat and the bowl it won't come fast <laughs> enough apparently they're making toilets that do it automatically but anyway it won't come fast but anyway we got one and all of a sudden every couple of days we'd get a case of toilet paper and I, <laughs> and I realized that michael our 16 year old he was probably 14 or 13 at the time we just press it whenever he saw it oh, and it won't let man. you reorder until the first order comes so he was probably pressing it every day oh, no but every three days we get then, another oil did we put it under lock and key did but that but that's to germany's point no i think we i don't know i hit it it's in a box no, i actually hit it that looks like it's oh, under lock and so, key right No, there. no, this one is cool. This is our, but this isn't going to work, you know, John, in a couple of days. That's so sad. I like these. <laughs> this is a really good idea. So this is in our battery box. So I don't know if you have an over-the-shoulder shot of that, Karsten. So, John, are these new or old? New. These are new. But when this runs low, you push the button, the Energizer Bunny button, and Amazon will deliver day after tomorrow new batteries to put in this box. 
That's a perfect idea, right? When I get down to one paper towel roll, I push the button, and then a whole new thing comes. Well, it's, in time. it's not going to work anymore. I, that's that's devastating. You can live. <laughs> you can live without batteries and okay. paper towels. Just don't use them ever. In our competition for the number one first world problem, <laughs> that one wins. Thank you. Devastating. 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 Wow, they like... will have the on-screen <laughs> dash buttons on the oh, website. Those are no. That's -uh. not the same. Uh uh. That's. Mm -mm. I would refuse to use those. I, I've seen those. Amazon for a long time. says yeah, they I they, now. I don't know if this is true or not. They said they're stopping the dash button because nobody uses them. Hello, call me up. <laughs> we use it. I think this is a perfect use. It's a little special box. Yeah, it's got batteries in it. When the batteries run low, we push the button. I, I did thought it. about that's what they should sell time. a box, a box for the stuff that you get when you dash box <laughs> containers I used it for laundry detergent, for uh, dish detergent, for toilet paper, for paper towels, for it dog like food. But here's what I think people are doing now: they're saying, "Echo, order more batteries." Echo, yeah. oh. right? That's yeah. just as easy. Well, but that's and then the there's a confirmation. It says, "Okay, what's your yeah. code?" Uh, it can interact with you. It could say, well, you know, in the past you've ordered these batteries. What kind that do you want? That seems a little more pragmatic. Yeah, I'm not really, a, I'm not really a, 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 as much as I love these different assistants, I'm not really a fan of talking to them. I got to be honest with you. So, really? yeah, I've got a bunch of echoes, but I'm not really fond of saying blah, blah, do blah, blah, blah. There is echo news. Uh, there's more to talk about. We got a ton more to talk about. I almost don't want to stop, but I have to take a little break. We are twit past, present, and present now. Was past, present, and future <laughs> with Mike Elgin from uh, Computer World and Elgin.com and, of course, Gastronomat.net. What's your next one? We're doing Barcelona next <gasps> month, and then we're jealous. doing the Prosecco Hills in Italy, followed by Mexico City. <laughs> oh, what Catalonia. a life. Yeah. Doesn't he have a life? It's a, it's a life. It's awesome. It's a, it's a life. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. We are loving it. Micah Sargent, our newest... Our second newest hire. <laughs> Man, I just... That got happened it. fast. Yeah, you're old news wow. now. Wow. But he is Hello. our token... You are our token millennial. I am... I am I've am. i been a twit host for a <laughs> long time a week, now. A week. It's Ooh. great to have you, Micah. News. Thank you for having me. His, uh, his uh, dachshunds are... Dachshunds. Don't tell me. Dachshunds. <laughs> his wow. dachshunds. His dach... His chihuahuas. Oh, Look, they're drink. both small dogs, okay? Neither like that to be called wiener dogs either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have some more. <laughs> <laughs> I have another drink. Sir. His, his, <laughs> his Dotsons, his chihuahuas are named Henry and Miz, Mizzy. Yeah. Mizzy. Yeah, yeah, that's Mizzy. it. And, of course, our newest hire now, Aunt Pruitt. We love having Aunt here. Do you know what you're going to be doing when you get here? Do you have any idea? <laughs> um, I thought I was supposed to be, you know, rolling out the mats and making sure. No, 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 no. Do we have shows? Aunt's going to develop some shows for us, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He There's lots to do. Out. We've already worked that out. They don't mm. tell me. <laughs> They're going to form a union, demand uh, oh, Chihuahua great. Daycare. Chihuahua Daycare. What's your Chihuahua's name? Uh, our Chihuahua is named Jax. Jax. He's a beast. J A X. J A X. And but you also have a large dog. We have a large dog named Kylo Finn. <laughs> he's a hundred pound mastiff nice slash pit. A mastiff slash pit. That mm -hmm. is a huge dog. That's huh. very large. Mast he's, he's a pushover. If you took, <laughs> if you took the most dangerous, scary dog in the world and bred it with the largest dog in the world. <laughs> Now you get, you get Kylo though. Ren. Yeah. To be fair, pits aren't dangerous. No, I know. We love no, pits. that's a that's a that's a that's a lie. It's calumny. It's libel. They can it's, be dangerous. Pits are great with with kids. Mm -hmm. They love it. They can be trained to be mean. Yes, but that's a shock just like dachshunds. Shame. They can be trained to be mean. Kylo, Kylo the difference is the when a dachshund is mean. <laughs> you're like, what's it's still hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> it's still it's hilarious. Still hilarious. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, our show today brought to you by this little doohickey. I love this guy, Eero. Eero is the solution to your Wi-Fi woes. If you're thinking about Wi-Fi at all, you're thinking too much. Wi-Fi should just work. You should just open up your breakfast computer and you're <laughs> online, right? You head to the John and you're using your bathroom computer, you're online. The problem is we're, we're asking so much more of Wi-Fi now because we have... All these devices, Internet of Things devices, uh, we've got neighbors with Wi-Fi causing interference. It used to be Wi-Fi would just work. Of late, Wi-Fi's been a hassle. That's when Eero came along, and I just love it. They created the whole concept of a mesh system for your home. Fast, reliable Wi-Fi, eliminating poor coverage, eliminating dead spots, eliminating buffering. 
You'll have a strong signal whenever you need it. One of the things Eero does that's so interesting is, is the bandwidth shaping. So if it says, oh, you're watching Netflix in the bedroom, you're going to need those packets in sequence. Uh, but the kid is only reading email or he's playing Fortnite. It, it actually shapes your bandwidth. No more complaints. The Xbox not getting a signal that your security camera's offline when you need it. And it's so easy to set up. Now, we've got we've had mesh systems in Enterprise for a long time, but it took an IT professional to set them up to configure them. I know, Ant, you've done that. It's a re We're using uh, stuff here that you've got to, I mean, it's cr it requires Java to set up. It's crazy. Eero, you get a great Eero app. You plug in the Eero base unit. You put the beacons where you think. The app will say, no, no, closer, farther. It'll help you set it up. And then the app is also great, too, because you can manage your Wi-Fi. You can see what has happening. You see how many devices are on your network. I have Nero set up that when a new device joins my network, I get a ping. So I'll see a new Apple device has just joined the network, and I can see if that's what's supposed to be or not. It's Yeah, they're in the house. You can pause the Wi-Fi. We do this. I assign every unit that comes into our house to either Lisa or me or our kid, Michael, and if I want, I can even do this with Amazon's Echo. I could say, Echo, pause Michael's Wi-Fi. And then we wait and we hear, what happened to the Wi-Fi? It's great. It's so satisfying. I love it. <laughs> when it's power. That's power, baby. That's power. Uh, you can share your Wi-Fi very easily with a QR code. It has a guest network. And the other thing I really like about the Eero is Eero Plus. When you buy the Eero, you get a, uh, I think you get a year as part of your deal. Uh, but I pay for it. I just renewed it because Eero Plus does so many things. You can have it block ads, block malware. You know, this is really something every house should have. Email with attachments, malware attachments, they get blocked. We have family safe browsing. So I could say Michael's devices, no adult sites, no violent sites, no gambling sites. Uh, this is really high-quality scanning. It does a great job. It also secures the traffic with encryption. When WPA3 comes out, Eero's already said we're going to support it. You're never going to get complaints about the Wi-Fi again. You won't have to think about the Wi-Fi again. That's why we use Eero. That's why I set my mom up with Eero. I can even monitor her network from my phone here. So if mom has problems, I can go see her Wi-Fi network and say, Mom, you got to move that device or whatever. No more gambling sites for you, Mom. Never think about Wi-Fi again. And get yours fixed as soon as tomorrow. Go. I know you want it. So now go to eero.com, eero.com slash twit. If you use the offer code twit at checkout, you'll get free overnight shipping with your order. eero.com slash twit. And enter twit at checkout to get your Eero delivered with free overnight shipping. We love Eero. You will too. eero.com slash twit we thank him so much for making our show possible thank you Eero. uh while we're talking about uh those voice assistants there was some actually good news it's kind of funny because you and i were talking about this on ios today micah mm -hmm. um it came out first that amazon if you use the echo third party people might be listening and it turns out this is what every voice assistant does because this is how they improve it. Right. They take a percentage, a small percentage of the recordings and have humans say, well, does that match? You have to train it. You have to train it. Mm -hmm. So then we heard Google, oh, yeah, we do it too. And then recently Apple came out. Although you say that the original article named Apple, but nobody paid attention until The Guardian wrote an article about it like three <laughs> weeks later. Wow. But then they paid attention. Well, now Apple, Google, and Amazon have all said, okay, we're going to give you ways to turn it off. Apple's actually said, we're no longer going to use humans to grade. And the reason that was an issue, I think it's not unreasonable to think that they're going to do that for training, but the reason it was an issue is, is ever, do you use voice assistants? In your I house? do every now and then. Well, and I does every it. now and then one of them wake up for no apparent reason? Sure. <laughs> my Siri does, my home hub is always talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that means it heard something it thought was, hey, Shlomo, right. and hey, you know who, <laughs> and uh, started recording and sending it back, and then try to interpret it. That uh, it, uh, those are some of the recordings that might be sent to humans. Yeah, and who knows what that heard? Right, like a passionate tryst. I don't know who she is, but she's welcome in my house anytime. Okay. My dear friend, passionate, passionate tryst. tryst. That's my chat handle. Uh, like a passionate tryst. Actually, you're right. Or an argument. Yeah, or, man. you know, who knows, the secret code to my bit 
right. coin locker. I don't know. All right. <laughs> You'd like that information. I would, please, yeah, you if would. you know, Siri, <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> don't rub it in, Mike. <laughs> it's painful. Um, so anyway, this is not new. Well, we knew this. The, I, there are two takeaways from this. One is that these companies are really a bunch of weasels. They don't have <laughs> they don't have morality till they're caught. Right. And then suddenly they're like, right. oh, it's very Facebook of them. Right. So and, yeah. and and it's and it's true of all of them. And the fix is very simple. They just make it opt in. Mm -hmm. If you want, you know, you, mm -hmm. as you're setting it up or whatever, they're going to say, do you mind if we do this X Y Z? Some browsers already do that, and you just choose yes or no, and that's the end of it, and it'll be fine. But if we expect to get optimal performance out of these voice assistants we need better we training need, they need to train it yeah that's you know? part of the process yeah. well they need to make a case maybe and and so they could make that case and say look we'd like to make this better you could help us make it better if All you right. opt in but let we should you should know one percent of the recordings might be heard by humans we'll do our best to anonymize make that it opt in large enough for everybody to see it perhaps you know that everybody, yeah. nobody will opt in. <laughs> nobody. That's the problem. You're, yeah, you're worried they'll just They know that too. Skip yeah. over it. Some people like it when they, other people are tuning into their passionate <laughs> tryst. So <laughs> that's going to really <laughs> color. Gonna the, no your judgment. Young. That's <laughs> your thing. That's fine. Yeah, but uh, that's going to mean Siri is really kind of kinky. Yeah, well. So yeah. we don't want that. We want, I mean, this is part of the problem too, is what you're training this stuff with affects right. the yeah. quality of the stuff. And if only people who like to be, I like to be watched, are going to let Siri watch, then that's not going to give you people good results. People so much about the performance of Siri and and I'm thinking if you don't let people train it you right. can't complain about This the is Apple's problem they're support they want to be private yeah. that means Siri's never going to be as good as the other guys who don't mind spying on you I think that there will be nerds who aren't so much I think there's like there's a there's a mid nerd and I kind of consider myself in that group <laughs> because there's a far right. nerd and the far nerd is like I will never let any sort of Wi-Fi thing in my house I don't even let my dogs get on the internet, but a mid nerd <laughs> like me, I'm okay with Siri hearing the passionate Triss. No, I'm okay Wait, with what? Siri hearing uh, and well, being, honestly, getting better. Who cares so if yes. somebody hears that that you don't know far away and they? Well, some people do, and that's fine. I'm just saying I'm okay with that. So I think you're going to have a nice group of mid nerds. What's the as, next? As you should let your dogs yes. use the internet. What's the high far nerd? nerd. Far, far nerd. nerd. Yeah. Far nerd. I'm a far nerd. I turn every time you it say says no to everything. I say yes to everything. <laughs> then that's mid nerd. No, that's, you're a near nerd. No, there's got to be another nerd then. What's the I'm, one where you don't have any <laughs> concerns at all? Oh, that's the non nerd. No, I'm oh, a. This, he's clearly that's clearly a, like a regular consumer. Yeah, that's a regular <laughs> consumer. But you're you're mid nerd. You know, but you say yes anyway. That's the regular consumer. I want to be a special nerd. Okay, see, he doesn't just want to oh, be right yeah. in the middle. <laughs> All right, there's the Leo nerd. There's the Leo who will uh, every time you, it says, "Would you like to send uh, information back to app developers, help them make it better?" That's one of the check yeah. marks. I say, "Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's Absolutely. where you're doing. Absolutely, yeah. every time you turn that off, it depends on what I'm using. What a selfish son no, of a it gun! Depends on what. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I also don't selfish. send it to developers. <laughs> I'll send it back to the to Apple, but I don't do the developer one. Really? Yeah, we right. talked about this a little bit on iOS today because there, it's the way that they collect it for developers that makes mm -hmm. me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, the, the crashes and things like that go through, from what I've been told, a different system than the way that Apple gets the data back, and I'm not trustworthy of the company that helps with that uh, oh, sending to developers. There's so a that's why I say Again, no on developer one. I don't care. So yeah. you're, you're a Leo nerd. I'm the peak yeah. under my kimono nerd. <laughs> Um, no, that's not good. <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> but part of it depends on what you do for a living and what your life is like. So you're... I'm on camera every day. You're everything. Like, yeah. you're, you're very uh, open and public. But if you were in financial services or if you were... Oh, yeah, I respect that. If you were, if you were a drug dealer or if you stole tires for a living... Or By the way, all three are the same profession. Exactly. It's, okay. it's a fine line. Yeah. Uh, between that and podcasting, but I mean, I, I think a lot. I think a lot of people. You know, so, some people are, you know, they're they're psychiatrists or whatever, and they they really have to have a lot of privacy, Wouldn't and it, that makes a lot of sense. In yeah. a way, it's ironic because if somebody's hearing anything, I any passionate trysts of mine, they're going to recognize my voice, possibly. Oh, that's right. true. And make it, oh, listen, to what I got from Leo. That's true. And, that and the really kind of people who no. are yeah. who are looking at these things are the kind of people who would be, who would be listening, listening and it? watching to this podcast. Could you send me those recordings? <laughs> uh, and if you if you hear my Bitcoin wallet password go floating through, please. By the way, you will not be able to buy Bitcoin with the Apple credit card. Ooh, that was a nice thing. No, yeah, how do you like that? I'm pretty yeah, smooth. You huh? are a pro. Uh, no cryptocurrencies, no casino gaming chips, no racetrack wagers, no lottery tickets. What about horses? No fun. 
Can you I can, do horse? You bats? cannot play the ponies. Darn it. One of the cool things about this, I think, is that you essentially establish your relationship with the Apple credit card through the wallet app on, on the iPhone. So you basically say, yeah, I, I want to apply for this, and it all goes through that app. And yeah. then the credit card, when you're approved and all that stuff, just shows up in there. Right. And, uh, and then in the mail, you get a titanium card that has no number on exactly. it. Exactly. Just your name. And the, and the card will that, actually though, cut glass. Oh, you don't normally get the card I if think you don't you say I want I, the card? I remember them talking on stage at oh. WWDC that that's an opt-in exactly. uh, so, option. The card is for people who don't have a watch or a phone. They can't use Apple Pay. They right. want you to use Apple Pay. This is really the whole right. point of the credit card is use right. Apple Pay. Well, I don't think right. you can no get it without a phone, though, right? How else would you know. sign up for it? Oh, I guess you'd have to. Huh? But I think it's just for people who like to use but cards. But there are places you can't use, use Apple Pay, Pay so yeah. that you might want a credit card for. The, there's, it isn't a specially good deal in any respect. The only reason you might want is for privacy. Uh, and also to look at me, I have an Apple And I have card. an Apple card. Um, the other thing is that they, they're giving discounts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord. We're going to get to the... We should, we should devote a whole hour of the show to Breach of the Week. There's oh. about eight this week, including oh, so Capital scary. One. So yep. scary. I almost even don't report on breaches anymore because it's like, well... <laughs> it's old news. It's <laughs> The second it happens, is old news. The Capital One is a big breach this time. Mm -hmm. Um was it 100 million? Yeah. Uh, but then there's the E3 she website, caught, which in, in a way this affects me more than Capital One because it's only 2,000 names, but it's of reporters and content creators and people who got credentials to see the E3 gaming show. Oh, and man. your home phone number Whoops. leaked. Whoops. Oh, okay. No. E3's removed the file, but the data is still circulating. Capital One, they caught the woman who did it. And what's still unknown is exactly what she did. It, it looks like from the indictment, she had somehow got an account, a, uh, a service account for Capital One. And so she, that means, and so this is the question. Capital One says, no, 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 we encrypt all that data. But yes, uh, what was it? 200,000 credit cards. I mean, social security numbers were, uh, were leaked, something like that. Um, well, how did they have the social security numbers? Well, this is the question. I've been reading up a little bit from different security experts and their guesses. One way a lot of companies, in quote, and I'm going to put this in air quotes, encrypt, they do a hard drive encryption. But yeah. if you have an account, if you have a customer service account, you're, you're in. It's you're unencrypted. In. Yeah. Right. You can exfiltrate right. the whole thing. And it's thought maybe that's what happened. Yeah. What they're supposed to do, what they should do, but it's hard, it's complex, it slows down everything, is end-to-end -end encryption, individual yep. encryption of every bit of data. Didn't the young lady sort of go on like reddit or something and say She's hey bragging look at stuff, look yeah. at what i did you yeah. know had no no idea the ramifications of it yeah. or just just that bold to brag about yeah. the breach i was told some years ago by uh, this uh, some gentleman at uh, the treasury department that that's generally how you get caught <laughs> if you shut up Right. <laughs> and disappear, you don't get caught. But hackers, a lot of these guys are not doing it. They're doing it either for the lulls or for the credit, you know, the street yeah, credit. Street credit. Exactly. They they want to they go into chat rooms and they say, you know what I did? Pressing uh, their hacker friends. Yeah. Yep. Oh man. And so that's how you get caught. So just a little tip. Uh if you're gonna hack somebody, don't don't run your But I don't think she cared. It. I don't think she wanted that information, right? The way um, that yeah, the way that it kind of talks about the after when it's made statements on social media, but then she recognizes that she has acted illegally. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Well, Wait a she's, she's going to really recognize it soon. And that orange jumpsuit is not very attractive. Um, so there's, uh, this is uh, Brian Krebs, of course, who has very good uh, the security guy. He's the security guy. He says interviews with almost a dozen security experts, including one who knows about the ongoing breach investigation. According to that source, the problem stemmed from a misconfigured open source web application firewall that Capital One was using as part of its operations on Amazon Web Services. This is a huge issue. Right. Misconfigured Amazon Web Services all over the place. It now, wasn't you go to show day, AWS. It was more on Capital One side, right? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't that AWS did anything wrong. It's just that, and this happens all the time. People set up AWS buckets or accounts, and they don't they don't lock it all down properly. Right. And uh, so Mod Security was the WAF uh, that was deployed along with the open source Apache web server to provide protections against several classes of vulnerabilities. But the misconfiguration allowed the intruder to trick the firewall into relaying requests to a key backend resource on the AWS platform. The metadata service is responsible for handing out temporary information. 
uh, including credentials. So she was able to get credentials. Jeez, Louise. yeah, and then uh, it was so it's a, it's a great piece if you're if you really want to know the technical details. Uh, Brian got it down. They they said he said they used a server side request forgery attack. Uh, the WAF was tricked into running commands it should not have been permitted to run, including talking to the metadata. Data. That's where she got credentials. Once mm. she got the credentials, she logged in. Everything was unencrypted. Uh, you know, nice hack. One, one, <laughs> one slightly humorous uh, after effect of this is that suddenly on the job boards, uh, Capital One is advertising a whole bunch of security jobs. I hope Either people were fired. The, yeah. Yeah. So. I hope people were, were, were fired. As uh, long as we're talking about uh, security uh, issues, your yeah, this iPhone is, this is, is wild. broadcasting information about you with Bluetooth LE. Uh, <laughs> this is a, it's a great uh, headline, hexway.io. Apple, Blee, Bluetooth LE. Everyone knows what happens on your iPhone. <laughs> and I, I discovered this the other day. Lisa and I were riding our bikes playing... A Harry Potter, and I have a very oh boy, <laughs> this is gonna even get more nerdy. And I have a very uh, I have a nerdy helmet phone. Oh man, Bluetooth, Come on. <laughs> Bluetooth helmet phone, and 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 I had forgotten to pair my phone to my Bluetooth helmet phone, and so I turned on pairing on my iPhone as I'm riding around. We're going 15 miles an hour through town, and then I looked down to see all I could see. Hundreds of stereos, yeah. speakers, all, right. all this yeah. stuff broadcasting Bluetooth <laughs> LE identity. And somebody wow. could see a helmet. It's like that's <laughs> including my helmet. helmet. <laughs> but I could have I could have played music into these speakers easily yeah. because Bluetooth LE is designed to be right. zero configuration, so you don't have to do the pairing thing. Right. Right. But as a result, many of our devices are just saying, "Hey, I'm here." What? You, hey, hello. hello. Cool. In fact, we should try. I should try it right now. It's no. no. It. no. 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 Like no. it actually makes it made it really hard to pair my helmet phone. I couldn't even find yeah, it. The list was so you? long. That's scary. So uh, here's the issue according to Hexway. Um, if you have an appropriate uh, software to take a look at what's going on, an attacker could, they're, they're only going to initially get uh, some limited information about your phone number, but they could, if they see your phone number more than once, and get that hash more than once, recover the phone number. They can get other information. Your iPhone talks about what operating system, the phone status, Wi-Fi status. There too? Not the IMEI, I don't okay. think. Buffer availability. Uh, and it's not just your iPhone, your MacBook, Apple Watch, and AirPods. All the Apple stuff is doing this. It's beaconing. And and honestly, I think this is part of. Remember when Apple was big on beacons? Like, That's what I was going to ask. I'm not the biggest security person, but I remember back when beacons was a big story, for, and everybody was like, "No, we don't want to do that." It was a it's, flop. It's, it's, the it's, idea is you'd walk into a store, the beacon in the store is on the pair of pants. You'd walk in your iPhone and say, "Hey, this pair of pants is on sale." All right. But in no order for that to work, whatsoever. Bluetooth LE, it'd have to be the pants are beaconing. Your phone's open and receiving. Turns out, we found this out at uh, WWDC. Every Apple device is also a beacon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh man. And so they, it's they haven't that. completely gotten rid of beacons either because they've just mm -hmm. recently uh, made available. It's a developer feature, and it's an app that you can get in the App Store that sets up, helps you go around and set up beacons in a in a place. So they have not get gotten rid of that. It's just sort of been buried, I think, for a little while while they were getting all of this figured out. Because even in this article, it talks about how older devices do not do this. No, this is modern. Yeah, and so... This is a convenience. It's exactly. The, the batteries can finally kind of take it, the, the Bluetooth version that they have, etc. Uh, but beacons are, I think we're going to continue to see more of those, especially as these indoor maps continue mm -hmm. to improve yeah. at different places. Yeah. This is, it's such a challenge, and this is where being a... Uh, what kind of nerd am I? A mid-nerd. A mid-nerd. You're, you're a Leo nerd. Yeah, but you're the special. <laughs> I'm starting to rethink my nerdiness because um, I just I feel like there's more leaking than we could possibly even really understand. Yeah, we're like trying to plug all these holes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's maybe be prudent to be a far nerd. To be a far nerd now before it's too late. You know what I'm saying? I started using Firefox, turning on 
HTTPS, DNS over it's HTTPS. It's only about that search engine to use. Start to use start page instead start page. of Google because it anonymizes. The, it's the same Google results, but anonymized. Start using Firefox instead of Chrome. Uh, I, I'm not a paranoid anti a privacy guy. I'm not. I'm not a tinfoil hat guy. But I'm starting to think. I have my moments. It's going to be hard to back to walk right, this back. Right. Mm. You know that. All right. Right now, it's fine. But my, five years from now, and there's this massive database of information about me. Is that right. going to be an issue? Once AI gets better and oh, God. Mm. They, they can process gazillions of... Uh, I think you should turn this whole studio into a Faraday cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. The one You know how place. people would complain if they came in here and none of their devices worked? They'd be so pissed I can't off. play Harry Potter. I want to play Harry Potter. All right, I'm going to talk about face recognition because it's another area where... I, uh, we're the frog in the boiling water. It's setting. It's starting. Yeah. To, it's getting hot in here. Yep. So hot. So hot. But first, I want to whiten my teeth. You don't mind during the middle of the show. Be my have, guest. Have at it. Have at it, sir. <laughs> I love these. These are. This is the Crest 3D white strips. These are freaking awesome. You can go to the dentist and spend hundreds of dollars to do this. My son. My son. He's 25. He said, "Dad, get me some of those." I said, "Henry, your teeth are white." He said, "No, I got to what did he say? I'm pre-gaming for uh, out, outdoor outside lands. He's getting ready for the big outside lands festival, and he wants to have white teeth. <laughs> said, perfect. All you need is a week. You get one of these, seven of these pouches. This is the white strip. It's the same treatment dentists use, but you do it in your home for a fraction of the cost. I'll show you how this works, just because I think everybody wants to know. These are the strips. <laughs> it's hydrogen peroxide, okay? And they're in a gel form. They, you peel them off. You, now, get a TV show, you an hour-long TV show you want to watch. That's my recommendation. We watch Breaking Bad. I put this on. Okay. That's there it. There you go. That's it. It's on. Off. Put them on your lower teeth. I can still talk. I wouldn't eat popcorn. No. <laughs> yeah. Peanut butter's right out. Yeah. Forget that. But, okay, they're whitening right now. Okay. Okay. I just put that on there. <laughs> Don't laugh. You'll be laughing out of the other side of your mouth. My teeth are shining so white. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> and uh, and so you leave there for an hour, okay? And then TV show ends, mm -hmm. hour is up. You take out, this is this is the thing that makes these 3D white strips really work. It's an LED, blue LED light. And it has a little timer in it. You had me at LED. <laughs> <laughs> once, once you're done, you leave the strip on, but you put the blue LED light and it shines the light and it whitens your teeth even further. It gets all the really deep stains from smoking, from coffee, coffee, whiskey, not whiskey. Do you coffee. like a, you like a good cigar once in a <laughs> while, right? Wine. I don't smoke them. I just chew. Oh, I love Speaking cigars. of Bluetooth, I just chew. Some <laughs> I love them. <laughs> Bluetooth? This is literally Bluetooth. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and you're and that targets the stains, makes the ingredients work faster. This actually, the dentists also use these LED blue light technology. One hundred percent noticeably whiter teeth, or your money back. Nice. So there's no risk. And I'm going to make it even better for you. In fact, when I told Henry, he said, can you get me one of these? I said, right now you get $20 off if you use the offer code TWIT. He said, okay, deal. That's a big savings. CrestWhiteSmile.com, promo code TWIT at checkout. These really work. I will, I will vouch for them. I've been using them, and I love it. And I, re I really think this is a great solution for anybody who wants whiter teeth without the expense. And the, it's just time-consuming to go to the dentist. It's safe on your enamel. This is exactly how dentists do it. There's no messy gels, no messy trays. The no grip white strips are easy for you to wear. You can drink water, you can talk, and uh, and in one week, noticeably whiter teeth are your money back. Get twenty dollars off your Crest 3D whitening strip by going to CrestWhiteSmile.com and entering the promo code TWIT at checkout. That includes shipping, so you don't have to run down to the Walmart to get this. You can get it in the mail. CrestWhiteSmile.com. Promo code TWIT, $20 off. That's a great deal. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what I like? I just, you, people say, oh, you look younger. They don't, they don't really know what it is. It's just a little, it's a little, puts a little spring in your step. <laughs> CrestWhiteSmile.com, promo code T-W-I-T. -T. And can I just say thank you, Crest? Crest is a Procter & Gamble company, and it has been the holy grail of podcasting to get Procter & Gamble, the big brands, yeah. on these shows yep. and i'm so grateful that they took a chance with us that's awesome and uh and so you all go out and get these because i want i want <laughs> it's not just for me but every podcast this is this, this is, is how a ads crucial, work yeah. this is a crucial <laughs> turn in the development of podcasting mm -hmm. to get these big brands involved and yep. so thank you crest for taking a chance on us we really uh, 
appreciate it. Um, what was I going to? I was going to talk facial about recognition. facial recognition. Oh, okay. A couple of a uh, couple of developments in the annals of face recognition. There's a UK company called AI Bar <laughs> <laughs> that when you walk into the bar, they have. I guess the idea is they're going to they're going to paint a strip on the floor or something that says stand here if you want to be recognized. What? <laughs> that There's, would be no. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it just did it as you walked up to the counter. Yeah, well, if you don't well the point is if you didn't want to, you could stand outside oh. that zone. But you ain't going to get served because the way this works is the if AI bar recognizes your face and adds you to the queue. Okay. Oh, here comes Micah. And if it knows your drink, again, it will have yeah. your drink ready for you. <laughs> again, that's good. It will Where's charge you Louis? automatically. The bartender can change it if you, you, want, you want to. You could say, remove me from your database. The bartender could do that. But the idea, and honestly, this is what a good bartender does, right? Mm -hmm. Recognizes you, yeah. says, I'll have your Makes you feel good. Keeps track. Makes you spend a lot of money. Yep. Spend a lot of money. Gets a good money. tip. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Uh, a survey commissioned by Data Spark <laughs> asked 2,000 drinkers a lot of money. what their biggest complaint is about bars. What do you think? Uh, I, I can't can give a drink. Yeah. 80% of those say it's people pushing in at the bar queue is true. Because I'm not a pushy type. And Lisa says, go get me a, a glass of wine. I've never been to bars where I have to push people. Yeah, neither have I. I don't know what this world is. Generally, They're when crowded. I walk in, people just sort of park. Oh, well, so that's you. Really look at me. They look at me. They go, out of, <laughs> your, out of my way. So uh, this would help that. People, uh, the Brits like to queue. So they're, they're queuing. See, queuing. look, Famously, look, there's a, the Brits like to queue. They like to queue. Here's, see the picture? They got numbers over their heads. So the bartender goes, oh, you're number two. <laughs> you're no next expert, in line. I can tell those people are not waiting for a drink in a this bar. Is not look at that. Look at them. They're number not, two, frankly, doesn't look happy. <laughs> number two either needs a well, drink or... Somebody's been designated as number two. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> like like, nobody likes that. <laughs> Why did I get number two? Yeah. Oh, All right. Man. So that's. Uh, I think that's... I don't think this is a problematic use of face recognition. I the like company it. says we don't store these more than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That would be potentially a problem. Like, well, if we see Leo at the bar every night and yeah. that gets sent to the insurance company, that's not good. Oh, well, nice. this, this actually mirrors another company that I'm writing about for Face, uh, for, for Fast Company, actually, um, called Patron Scans, one of the companies I'm writing about. Uh, and what they do is they, ca they card your card when you walk in. They can recognize hundreds of different IDs. They can tell if you're old enough or the fake ID, whether it's been used before. But you can be blacklisted by the bar. And when you're blacklisted by the bar, you're blacklisted by all the bars. Whoa. Uh, they no. Use, they use patron scan. And wow. they got into trouble in California. Because I think that's great. <laughs> I like it. No. If you're get, what do you have to do to get blacklisted by a bar? It's got to be something. Yeah, it's awesome. up it to the bar. Really That's the problem. It's up Stop to the bar. Stop looking at me like that, Michael. So you, have you just keep you over there like no, no. And I'm like, well, what has he done? Because I need. <laughs> No, and and so it's it's a it's a problem because they're retaining the data, the personal data on people for oh. months and months, and they, it's actually it's an international company. It's actually a Canadian company, and they're in the UK, US, and Australia. If you're banned in Detroit, you can't get a drink in the UK because it's oh, part of the man, system. No, right? I got so, no problem with that. Okay, but. But if somebody has a bad breakup and they put their girlfriend on the on the list, oh, well, and now they're blacklisted for life yeah, from true. all bars. Uh, she should come over here because we've got cognac, mm -hmm. and, and we don't have face recognition. I, I, there are certainly some concerns with that. <laughs> I, all I face like recognition it. has the potential problem of yes, yeah. But you, well, face recognition. The problem with it is that you can you can both scan and capture somebody's biometrics from half a mile away. With a camera, yep. anybody can do it. Yep. Uh, your face is available out Did there. Did you see the new technology, the laser technology that can detect your heart? Yes. From half a mile away, yep. and turns out your heartbeat is as distinctive as your That's fingerprint. Right. That's right. So mm -hmm. positive ID is going to be trivially easy. Um, but uh, recently, really wrote a column about this because there's a lot of confusion in the enterprise space about whether companies should embrace face recognition for mm -hmm. authentication and authorization. And my take is yes. All these controversies about the consumer use of and with Facebook. controls. Well, the, the, there's a difference between so the people are like San Francisco and three other cities have banned face recognition by the police, mm -hmm. and it's because face recognition is biased. Basically, yeah. it 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 it, it, uh, certain it has more gender, false positives with African Americans with women. Women exactly, and, and partly is, that's that thing we were talking about with not enough 
in not the enough database. training for it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And and companies are coming along with that. And there there's a uh, a woman who's been driving this and, and uh, her research, I think she's in the UK, has been influencing companies like Microsoft and Apple and Google, not Amazon. Uh, but um, this is a totally separate discussion from whether this is good authentication technology within an enterprise for access to various areas, for digital access to, to certain databases, et cetera. It's a totally separate thing. So I say if you're in the enterprise space, which I know a lot of the listeners are and a lot of viewers are, Go for it. These 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 controversies. That Aren't you worried about well, consumer backlash? There is a consumer backlash, but again, I think the consumer backlash is about bias. It's about harvesting people uh, people's faces without their permission. It's not about employees working in sensitive with sensitive business data who are trying to get access to like oh. the clean room, et cetera, et cetera. That's a totally separate thing, and I think that's a legitimate and valuable use for face recognition. So that's my two cents. You got to separate. You, there's the a great HBO show, uh, six episodes called years, uh, year after year. It's about, it's a just very dystopian yeah. future. Uh, aren't they all more of this stuff? So I know it's depressing. Like, the I'm the still watching dystopian. reruns because everything is so sad. So, but what they Jeez. talk about is, uh, uh, and, and actually, uh, Neil Stevenson's latest novel also talks about uh, prevalent use of stuff to disguise yeah. your face. Yes. And I just realized there's a new business for Crest. We're going to call it the 3D yeah, reverse face, it. face blurring kit. Nice. That's right. <laughs> and then it'll foil. It turns out, you know Juggalos? Juggalos? You know Insane Clown Posse? Whoop, whoop, oh, my God. Whoop. Yeah. So <laughs> Did you just Kevin knows Juggalos, in, apparently. Did you just go to Insane Clown Posse? Insane Clown Posse. So you know the paint, the face paint that yes. Juggalos do, the weird yeah. face paint? It, Turns out it foils. It foils face mm -hmm. recognition. Right. So get ready because the future is going to be full of people with insane clown posse. I recommend, there's, there's I recommend tattoos that that on your face, face yeah. personally. Got tattoos. Like masks that you can put on. It's like a peel and stick. Yeah. Wait, stick and peel. Stick and peel. Yeah. yeah. No, don't take chances. <laughs> and I, get I think the, the tattoo. show is called Years and Years. It is an awesome show if you want to watch it. It is the most depressing show I've ever watched. No. In my life. Oh, yes. good. I would love to watch that. <laughs> and they tack a happy ending on it the last five minutes just so you don't go kill yourself at oh the end of it. Oh, my gosh. But, it, but it's honestly... <laughs> They'll lose viewers. The sad thing is it, it's, 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 again, the frog in the boiling water. It starts in the present and just yeah. builds on what's already happening. And it says, you know, you know in 10 years what's going to be like? You know, in 20 years what's going to yeah. be like? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, frog... Boiling water, are you in the pot? China is now eliminating face uh, uh, QR codes for face recognition in payments. Hmm. So Japan and China mm -hmm. jumped on this. We're now mm -hmm. getting on the QR code yep. bandwagon, right? I saw it the other day. I saw a street musician with a QR code on his violin case, and it said Venmo me. Oh. And you could instead of putting money in the violin case, it was just here in Petaluma. You take you That's use your awesome. phone. Yeah. That's an entrepreneurial like, spirit. That is really right there. brilliant. Yeah. So that is that's been around in Asia for a long time. Now the newest thing, this is from the South China Morning Post. QR codes on their way out. Uh face recognition. And so what you'll do, and there's two there's competing systems, one from Alipay, which is Alibaba's kind of payment platform, the other from WeChat. Um, you see right here the picture. Ali, this is Alipay. Smile to pay. Okay. There's a tablet. Hmm. There's a camera on it. And if you walk up to it, this is at CES a couple of years ago. And actually, I think I seem to remember there were a couple of McDonald's stores using a Google Smile to pay. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that in Silicon Valley? No. Yeah, I think a couple of years ago Google did this in Silicon hmm. Valley. Oh no. I picture this like you're out to lunch with your friends and you're splitting the bill and it's like, now hold on, I just got to get your face in, okay, and do you pay your ten dollars? So this is like a I don't even I it's think like a this square card. Bad. That's why you, you have a somebody else's face on a stick and you put it. <laughs> <laughs> and Grandpa's getting this one for me today. Right. Well, a lot of this comes down to how well face recognition works. Right. Yeah. False positives a problem, especially when you're talking about apprehending. Yep. Only a matter of time kernels. before it's essentially perfect, though. So, you know, going forward... I have forward, to think that's the case, yeah, right? It's, it's coming. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. And when you talk about Google solely... Yeah. Um, with the radar. With and the radar and all, that stuff, and all that Oof. There's two reasons Google's doing that. One, because maybe it'll sell more Pixel 4 models, but yeah. the other, what they're gathering data, right? Yep, yep. This is, well, um, I think we talked about this uh, on Twit last time I was on. I think this is why the Amazon robot, in order to navigate your house, it has to scan everything yeah. in the house. Yeah. Yeah. did that. Which makes and, sense. And th there, all this incidental scanning is going to be useful in a database, just like voice uh, data is now. They're gathering it to improve it. And oh, by the way, we have this terabytes of data 
what else could we do with it? It was very controversial when Roomba was mm -hmm. doing that, sending it back, and there was some yeah. issue about where that 3D map went. Yeah. Like, all, the only thing that really needs it is the Roomba itself. There's no reason to send it back to the home office, but it was. Yeah. And there was some concern that maybe I, I Amazon disagree. was using maybe it to figure out what your sofa... Maybe there is a reason. Maybe they need to figure out their algorithm on to oh, maybe. Make it better. Yeah, how, yeah, how to, how to turn that corner yeah. just right. You know, because what if I'm having a uh, what was it a passionate tryst? That's the word. Passionate that's the phrase. <laughs> Show title is the phrase. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is that blob in the middle of the living room floor there? A passionate oh, tryst. Just probably, steer around it, Roomba. Just I'm steer probably around in, it. in the minority, but I think that the Roomba should actually analyze the DNA that it vacuums up, just like <laughs> you're in the minority. But it could. It could. It totally could. Yeah. This is why I think there are so many dystopian future TV shows. Because there's so many dystopians possible. There's so many possible <laughs> things. Yeah. Choose your dystopia. Choose your... <laughs> I just want to go right. back to parts I want my recreation. robot to fold my laundry for me. And then I'll they give you my DNA. That I'll robot. Let you, they no, put, this this one from Amazon. Will it? Because remember, it there know. was one that was going to do that. And it was, it was so much work. It. Yeah. it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> they, they went out of business. For Someone two asked years me about at CES, that it was just like a yes. box with nothing inside. And it was <laughs> like, there was, was a tiny person inside folding laundry. Somebody asked me about that at CES, and I just laughed at him. I was like, why? There's no point in this thing. I'll announce it here. I, I felt so bad last year that it, I wasn't at CES. You go every year. You're going this year already. Yes, sir. You're working for Tech Republic. Let's all go to CES this year. Oh. What do you say? Bring your track shoes. We're all shoes. going to CES Mike this says year. no. Yeah, well, you, I'm just, I'm shaking my head because it's like, get Leo drinking. Next thing he's talking crazy. Talking about <laughs> CES. No, I, 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 we're going to do CES. We've already decided You've had this. enough, Leo. I'm, I'm not, we've already decided this, John. It's already been decided. We're I thought go to that's CES why I left the company. We're not going <laughs> to, if you guys go to CES, I'll go to CES with you. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. one in the future. We're not going to do like the big booth. To CES. We're not going to do the big booth that we've done in years past. That was like hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's that was a lot of money. We'll do street podcasting. Yeah. We'll go out and set up a yeah, booth on the gorilla. sidewalk. Can't we yeah. do gorilla? Gorilla. Yeah. gorilla That's the, remember when I went to South by Southwest and I had a monopod with a camera surfing. on it? Yeah. You that was surfing. gorilla. The whole thing was, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to bring a team. It's just going to be me. That's how you got banned from Apple events, too. Gorilla podcasting. Brilliant. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that again. I like that. That does sound fun. I, I'm one fun. of the few people that enjoy going to CES you love it. every year. Now, granted, I may sleep about two hours a night, which is about half of what I sleep. That's every what night. almost killed me last you time. Know, but I it's so much fun. It's a lot of work, but it's you know one reason so I want to go, and it's actually a very controversial. The Boring Company. Oh. So Elon Musk is boring. You want to see their hole. <laughs> They're boring <laughs> holes underneath Wait the convention minute. center in Las Vegas. <laughs> The Las Vegas Convention Center has already given them tens of millions of dollars. There will be, they're going to be Teslas, specially modified yeah. Teslas underneath. Yeah, I want to see that. It's too. like a subway system. Yeah. But there's some controversy. The people on the monorail mm -hmm. above the ground are mad at the boring company saying, you're going to disturb the pillars that hold up the monorail. We live in the yeah. future. And then the monorail we can't... Conflict between the monorail people and the... <laughs> the whole the horrors. And the monorail can't have their the ads people going are here. The hovercraft people don't care at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the drones are the good, too. The jetpack people. <laughs> I, I, knowing Elon, I predict there will be at least a test, a demo version of yeah. the whole that we can yes. go into. Of course. <laughs> Count me in. Everyone yeah. hates customer service, says the Wall Street Journal. This is why technology lets companies see how badly they can treat consumers right up to the moment they bolt. So there's two ways you can use the data you're getting on your call center and your call tree. You could either say, oh, let's make this a better experience because people are miserable, or how miserable can we make them <laughs> before they leave? Wait a minute, Mrs. Laporte, you're trying to tell me you haven't had a client that you just raised a rate, you yeah, know, but a couple percent. If, if you're AT&T and them? you hate all your clients, what is the business you're <laughs> in? Some companies now equip call centers. This is the journal. I think it's, you know, more of a kind of a fluffy piece, but it makes kind of makes sense. Anybody who's ever been on a call tree knows how horrible the these are. The worst. Uh, some companies now equip call centers with software that analyzes a caller's tone of voice and pace of speech to determine how upset the person is. <laughs> Angrier call. So this is a tip. Your AI little pro work. tip. Start getting excited. <laughs> Angrier callers get routed to agents skilled at de-escalating conflict. 
And they're warned, this guy's pissed. <laughs> I think this is exactly what's always gone on, right? But now they, they, they have this has been around. For, this type of thing has been yeah. around for a long time. I've learned that if you just say the word litigation <laughs> on one of these calls, <laughs> litigation. You know what I've learned? If you're really nice and treat the person like a human being, How about you that? get right through. A lot I've of done that too, but a lot of you, works a lot. Better. Faster, you have to reach so. a human being before you can get to that that's point. True, that's true. That's problem. true. I just hit zero, 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 star, 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 <laughs> star, zero, star, zero, star. star, star, star. <laughs> A lot of our uh, listeners work in call service centers. Mm -hmm. They're CSRs. They're mm -hmm. answering phones. It's a very, I mean, it's the number one geek job, probably. Millions and of people And it's a tough it. gig. And I have every sympathy for them. It's, it's a hard. tough gig. I answer people's phone calls for six hours a week on the radio. Mm -hmm. And that's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I pretend I enjoy Man, it, but it's mics a... Mics are on. Yeah. No, whoops. Uh, no, they're great. They're not. So, but I need this. So listen to what, this is This is what they do. Um, Affinity, which is a company that makes call center software, crunches data gleaned from consumers' demographic profiles, credit scores, and past interactions with the company. So they've got this database. You call in. They know who you are. They determine which customer service agent is the best fit. It's dating. An algorithm then matches the caller to the agent who has had the most success with that type. Oh my God! Of what do you mean, you people? <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm speechless. <laughs> this is probably every time you call a call center now. Mm -hmm. Probably going on right. Oh, that's oh that's Aunt. <laughs> Send them over. Let's we know. Goes to yeah, Aunt goes Cynthia. to Cynthia. Sipping whiskey yeah, and yes. cursing. Yeah. <laughs> and then just as. Data can be used to measure consumers' threshold for bad service. It also helps pinpoint which shoppers are most profitable and therefore worth the effort and expense to please. So this explains a lot because it used to be you could call up and say, I'm leaving your company unless you make it good. Right. More and more I'm hearing people say, I did that. And they said, okay. All right. Yeah, you so, used to, they used to call it chicken playing yeah, take chicken or yeah, something like that. Yeah, and it might not work anymore. Who pioneered this was Netflix. Back in the day when they would mail you a DVD, mm -hmm. right. they actually would, um, the, the more movies you ordered, the less uh, available were the movies you wanted. So if you ordered ordered one movie a month, you would always get it. But if you ordered like six movies a month, you'd have to wait. It would be months, months and months of wait because they wanted to get rid of you. Right. Because they're paying for the postage and all that oh. kind of stuff, the more you ordered, you, if you ordered more than five movies a month or something, they were losing money on you. That, right. was, that was really what passive they want. aggressive. Yeah. They wanted what they leave. wanted, what they always wanted, was somebody who would rent a movie and not return it for months. Exactly. Like that was me. a perfect customer. Yeah. So yes. they cost pay, them you nothing. Pay fees. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you pay the same and monthly. you pay fees. That's right. Yeah. Oh. That's it's like the library. They've always wanted that, right? Yeah. You keep those books as long as you want. A lot of places are, a lot of libraries are stopping that now, though. No, I'm kidding. I don't think the library really wanted you to do that. I feel like they got a lot of money on the <laughs> Oh, man, those late fees, I'll tell yeah. you. This library's just uh, rolling in cash. Here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it turns out that maybe the person you think and that companies think would be the best for the customer service lines are not. There's a disconnect between what companies think customers want and what they actually want. It's most common for customer service agents to be empathetic. That's that's They're looking for somebody who's empathetic. Right. No, we don't want that. An analysis of how well customer service agents perform, a personality type known as a controller, <laughs> someone who is outspoken and opinionated, did far better. Only 2% of managers said they would consider hiring such a person but it turns out customers want to deal with somebody who is smarter than they are and will fix the problem. I, I agree get with that, that part. Yeah, I, I got that. it. I'm going to fix it. Oh, those guys. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I get Not, that. Oh, I'm so sorry. They always say that now, and I, I hate that when I they say that. that. It's like, no, you're not. You no. have a script. Yeah. I used to manage a Nobody. service desk years ago, and the biggest tip that I gave them, first of all, was just shut up and listen. Just, Good. Just let the yeah. the support person just did it all your off their call chance. is so important to mm -hmm. us thank you so much for being here corporate gave me a script i never saw the script uh, later you know but we, we just just shut up and listen and let the customer say what's wrong <clears throat> and once they're done then you do your job and they were always happier after mm -hmm. that you know because mm -hmm. they're first of all you're not going to get a phone call where they're just like, hey, this is a great day to be alive. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> For some reason, I can't connect to the internet. It's just awesome. No, they're, they're always going to call you in a bad mood, you know, and you had yeah. to be able to deal with that. So 
I've always said to defuse it, just shut up. Let them yeah. get it off their Let chest. Let them vent. Mm -hmm. Try that on your radio show, Leo. I do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Today I did something I'm not proud of. Oh, man. Uh oh, boy. That's I can't wait to watch the rerun. kind of dro droning on uh -huh. and on, and I was running out of time because, you know, it's a network show. You, you right. saw this, Zach, right. right? You were there. And... Um, that I'm looking at the clock, 10, 9. So I just started, the music starts to come. I just faded him out. I didn't say anything. I just, oh, no, him, I, I just faded him out and we went to commercial. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. When you came uh, back, did you fade him back in? Fade him back Still in. Still talking. Gonna you, going, I'm going to give you a fist bump. He's talking about his cabin and he's got this thing. And then, I'm going to give you a fist bump for that. You like that? Yes, that's, that's just awesome. Fade him out. <laughs> See, in the future, we'll have earpieces that will let us do that when we're having a conversation one-on-one yes. on one with somebody. Won't I have them. They're great? called hearing aids. Yes. It's great. Uh, you just turn them off and then just <laughs> Lisa goes, did you hear me? What? I don't have a hearing aid, and you can ask Phoebe. She tells you I turn my volume Yeah, we call that time. selective, selective hearing. Selective hearing. <laughs> I've been accused of selective, selective hearing, Selective hearing. Just go, mm-hmm. Yes, dear. Mm-hmm. We had a... This has been... Uh, I'm thrilled to have you all here, by the way. Aunt Pruitt, welcome. Thank to you, the family. Thank you for moving your family out here. Thank you. Thank you for having um, us. You just—you've always been one of my favorite people to have on. Oh, you're gonna make me blush. And uh, just for us to be able to get you, <laughs> the and pleasure's the, orange. And, and the pleasure's orange. And uh, and your family out here is just a thrill. It thank is an for, honor. Thank, thank you, you for being here. The whiskey's on me. Uh, Michael right, Sargent, I it. feel the same way. Again, another guy I never thought we'd get. I'm so thrilled Aww. that you uh, trusted us with your future and your. Chihuahuas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we welcome you to Twit. Mike? I don't have a tiny dog, Leo. I don't have one. Mike's That's having too much fun anymore. in Barcelona, Prosecco, oh, Mexico man. City. You should all join us. Really hard. Uh, honestly, maybe we should just do that. Have a Twit gastronomat. That would be amazing. That would be so much Say fun. Say the word and we'll Colleen, you want to do that? Let's do it. We're all going to do it. Colleen's on board. Carson yeah. says, yeah. We're all going. John <laughs> says, no, I'll stay here. Somebody has to stay here, John. That's okay. Somebody's got to watch the dogs. John has a uh, FCC radio telephone license, third class. So. Oh, wow. I have the he perfect location for this. There's a little <laughs> hipster coffee shop in Essaouira in Morocco. Okay. A little beach town. Okay. They have fiber connections. What? Super fast. We could do Twit from there. From there. That's what I'm saying. Well, you did they say have Morocco. great coffee. I'm in. Yeah. Absolutely, let's do it. We're off on the road to Morocco. I'm in. Uh, our sh we had a great week this week. Uh, in fact, I think we have a little uh, short. Do we have a little short video we prepared for you? Watch. Previously on Twit. It's not foggy in here. We also have Paul <laughs> available yeah. if we need him in his Xbox jumpsuit. Right. I wish I was that then. I like the kitty cat, honestly. Kitty cat Paul. Oh, my oh boy. What the... Uh all about Android. Recently, the Google blog post details two features of the upcoming uh, Pixel 4. Motion Sense, which uses solely radar, uh, the solely radar chip in front for detecting hand motion control. Uh, you can skip songs, news alarms, silence phone calls, as well as face unlock. Windows Weekly. Two days ago, in 2015, a little something we call Windows 10 was born. It's typically Windows is on a three-year cycle. We've kind of exploded past that here. Security Now. Marcus Hutchins is free. U.S. District Judge said that the malware Hutchins helped stop was much more damaging than the two programs he created. Hands-on tech. What I've always wanted is a self-contained, fully capable VR rig that takes little to no setup and provides an expansive VR experience Mom, where I can move around the room freely and talk about checking all the boxes. The new Oculus Quest is out. Let me tell you right now, it's something special. To it, technology for your eyes and ear holes. J Jason's already said he's not giving me the. the I heard it. He Let's start here, Jason. Uh oh. Do you wash your legs in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Micah. Welcome to Tech News Weekly, where we get right to the details. Yeah, I wash my legs. Thank God. All they, right, we can do this. We can continue that. to be co-hosts. Um, you wash your legs in the shower. Yeah, some people don't wash their legs in the shower. Hmm. They just say, oh, the soap hmm. runs down. Hmm. So I guess those are washed. <laughs> We're all looking at each other like, which yeah. one? Of oh, which one? No, no, no. I have the new theme. One by out the way. of another people. way to get us yeah. here. <laughs> this is the new there theme we go again, for our yes. show. On the road to Morocco. Yes, yes, yes. That's you on the front. On That's the me on the back. Beats the bus, huh, <laughs> Where we're going? Why we're going? How can we be? I was sure? thinking about Bob Hope the other day. 
And I, I think nobody, he was the one of the biggest stars of my youth. Yeah. Remember, he'd come on Johnny Carson and like show up to a pop in, and yeah. everybody go crazy. Yeah. Do you know who Bob Hope is? No, you don't. Seriously? This Seriously. is. How old are you? <laughs> it's unknown. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, I'm realizing that a lot of the heroes of my 20s, when I was Micah's age, are not even known anymore. Yeah. yeah. But it goes both ways because a lot of the heroes of your generation. Yeah. Like, do you know Jenna Carlson? Marbles? No. I, I do, but she's not no. nearly as funny as Bob Hope. <laughs> Did you get invited to the. Malibu know. Instagram influencers party. <laughs> I don't know people of my generation either. Is the thing. I don't know anybody. Who's who? They're I'm stuck in a time warp. I, I was. I, I was looking at this article. <laughs> Taylor Lorenz wrote a uh, a great piece on it in I guess it's the Atlantic, um, in, in which he talks about. I didn't even know this existed. Uh, the uh, piece was called "Where Everyone's an Influencer." Inside Instagram's annual beach party. Oh, wow. Where Hollywood and social media collide. It's at Gladstone's Malibu, an old-timey seafood restaurant. And I'm looking at these pictures of all these gorgeous young people. <laughs> Meg DeLangelis, who has 1.7 million followers on Instagram. Brent Rivera, former Viner with 15 million followers on Instagram. <laughs> Eva Gutkowski, 6.8... I have no Never idea of who you any of these people Eva are. Gutkowski? You don't know Eva Gutkowski? <laughs> did Trey Ratcliffe leave the first angry comment on yeah, the no, story? Yeah, no, I bet he did. He, of course, wrote the book about how crazy this has gotten. I mean, to me, that sounds Look like at a this comedy, guy. right? <laughs> a this... bunch of narcissistic in, uh, influencers all together those? in one all room. Together. Oh, together. No those one's are, talking right. to each other. These are baby coconuts <laughs> branded Instagram with the Instagram logo. icon. That just makes me sick. I feel like this, I don't know. Uh, that specifically, not uh, this whole thing. And that's I, fine. Coconut that, abuse. Those, yeah. That yes. What no. It's, you? Like, <laughs> it's all so fake. Oof. At three, th I love the lead. At three thirty p.m. on a recent Tuesday, hundreds of Instagram influencers descended on Gladstones. Their entrances followed a script. One by one, hmm. they entered the restaurant's outdoor terrace. Immediately, whipped out a phone and began taking photos and videos. One young woman retraced her step through the entrance four times. As a friend filmed her from different angles. That's right. Uh, Another held her phone aloft. that perfect B-roll, baby. For a selfie while twirling a <laughs> cloud of cotton candy. Others rushed to the porch's edge to take more selfies. Two boys posed in similar-looking tracksuits before one stripped off his hoodie to soak in the 85-degree weather. The DJ, Leela B., also an Instagram influencer. Oh, Ooh. Leela B. Who? <laughs> <laughs> The crowd wore crop tops, layers of mesh, lots of neon, and for roughly 40% of the men, some form of Gucci loafers. <laughs> some form. This is not anything I would ever be interested in. Oh, man. This is your generation. Yeah. This is, this is. We me. had Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. I feel like this is. Uh, You've got Eva Gutkowski. I know Bing Crosby. Okay, okay. I feel like this is post millennial, oh, isn't it? This or is, is this something. millennials? Uh, what is the thing after millennials? Post millennials. The end of the world. Yeah. Although, actually, they're supposed <laughs> to save the world from us millennials, is what I've been That's told. That's what I've Well, read. your job yeah. is to save the world from us baby boomers. But so. we lost. You I failed guess. miserably. You failed. Yeah. So the post millennials <laughs> have to do it now. My younger siblings have to save the world. So. One of the things I should have told you this that every Twit host guests. Wait a minute, hold on, let me back up. Is a Casper mattress. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, cool. Sweet. I have one and I love it. You already have it? Good. I can hey, save baby, some you money. hear that? We get the mattress. We get the mattress, baby. <laughs> Wait, but you can no get my more dogs. No sleeping on the dog bed. Go to the mattress. <laughs> they make a dog bed. You can get one for my dogs if you yeah, want to. Yeah, I know. They make great dog beds. Yeah, you want to sleep on this dog bed. It's really comfortable. It's like, what? Yeah. You know, Lisa explained the Casper dog bed. So the whole deal, the Caspers, these are great mattresses, really nice really mattresses, are. engineered, made in the United States, obsessive engineering to make super comfortable mattresses. And because they eliminate the mattress store, the middleman, you get a great price. Right. Plus, they know that people want to sleep on the mattress, so they make a great offer. You get to sleep on it for 100 nights, and if you don't like it for any reason, you get all your money back. They come and they get it, and you get all your money back. Don't they come in? You're right. Don't they come in like a box or something? The, yeah. Oh, the oh comes do you have the box? video of me so and my fun. mattress? Some of, the, some of the best. So this is a this is a California king. <laughs> You're just missing the candle and the the Look hat. This. That goes this is you. a California king. <laughs> Every time we get a new Casper, I do the same video. I even wear the same jammies. Oh my And um, they come in a really compact box. By the way, when when my son went to college, we got him a Casper because it was so easy to get it upstairs. Right. And his mattress was disgusting in the dorm, so we really didn't have to get a mattress. You open. <laughs> it up the mattress whoosh, 
Look at that. It's beautiful. It's comfortable. And unlike a lot of other mattresses I've bought, even from mattress stores, you don't have to air them off and look how Whoa. Look at that. soft. Look at that. So I'll ask the question that all of America is wondering. Why didn't you open that up in the bedroom? Now, now you got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have a mattress in the foyer. Haven't you always wanted there. a mattress in the foyer? <laughs> Isn't this what you've really always wanted? Is a mattress? Oh, look in the you go to Leo's castle. house and that's what you see. Leo the, on the mattress. The kitty, yeah. That clearly Coming. says welcome. That's uh, <laughs> it's the Hugh Hefner dream, right? A mattress in the foyer. <laughs> Casper just introduces. I think this is part of the hybrid mattress collection. This is kind of an interesting thing. In the past, uh, Caspers have had no springs, but they decided there's some people want durable yet gentle springs. This has it, right? Uh, which offers luxurious comfort, but also resilient support, elevated lift. So the sport's kind of active and durable for all body types. This is really great for me and Lisa. I'm a little heavier than Lisa. So having the extra kind of independent lift is really great. She gets to sleep what she wants. I get what I want. The spring network gives you even better airflow. So that helps because sleeping cool is so important. I know you're a sleep expert, Micah. You do a, okay, did a podcast Leo. on sleep. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, I did a podcast on sleep. Well, but see, wow. this is a joke it's, that it's he a does with me. He's like, oh, you did a podcast, so you're an expert? Well, it's <laughs> not a joke. I'm serious. You paid enhanced. Okay, so. I did do a lot of research. You're really it. tiny, so you don't experience this. Maybe you do, and I know I do. I have a slight, just a when little When you're getting groups. to the edge of the bed, <laughs> and and you're trying to get out of bed, and the mattress gives. It crumples. And you just fall out of bed. Yeah. Right? There's no graceful every, way. Every morning. A yeah. mattress cries so each time. These new Casper hybrid <laughs> mattresses have enhanced edge support, a firmer perimeter, which means it's easier to get out of bed. Nice. I nice. love that. Nice. I, this is an awesome we mattress. We call it a bezel in technology. It's like a bezel. <laughs> and when, and when With chamfered edges, actually. <laughs> These these are the best mattresses I've ever had. My whole family Sincerely uses them. Many same. of our hosts. Aren't they great? Mm -hmm. Casper offers that's free awesome. delivery, so that's easy. And painless returns in the U.S. and Canada. 100-night risk-free sleep sleep on it trial. But i got to tell you, you're not going to want to return it. You're, you're actually going to want one, get one for the foyer. Challenge Even with the it. springs, the hybrid mattress, and that was one of them, comes in that box, that magical box that arrives on your doorstep, makes it so easy. Yep, yeah, move it to the bedroom before you open it up. I got the Casper... King size pillow, which is basically a body pillow. Oh, that sounds lovely. It's the bestest pillow ever. You just and, and I will say to Lisa, oh. give me the pillow. That's I, my no. pillow. And that's important because as we saw from the video, you sleep in your glasses. Yes. <laughs> so you want a good pillow. Okay, the video was my wife staged. Does, yeah. oh. <laughs> Get a Casper mattress today. You can save $100 towards select. $100? That's new. Yes. Wait a minute. What? $100 towards select mattresses. Go to casper.com slash twit1. And enter the offer code TWIT1 at checkout. Please use that new offer code because that's that's a better offer. $100 off. Sweet. Select mattresses, casper.com slash TWIT1. Promo code TWIT1 at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. You will love it. You will love your Casper. I wish I were in my foyer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nodding off. Um, are you worried about the Ring video doorbell? Have you been seeing this? Now, this is a yeah. former sponsor, and I have a Ring. But we're learning, Vice has been doing a whole series of articles about how local law enforcement is doing deals with Amazon, which now owns the Ring. Mm -hmm. um, the, the law enforcement will get free Ring doorbells if they get people to sign up. And Ring is making them, this is a motherboard got an email via public request record request ring has never disclosed the exact number of partnerships it maintains with law enforcement but we according to motherboard at least 200 law enforcement agencies this comes from a leak from a law uh, officer that was at a ring webinar uh so this and this was back in april so it could be more the oh. officer who sent the email told motherboard the email was a transcribed version of handwritten notes he took during a team webinar with a ring representative april 9th ring Trained officers on how to use the law enforcement neighborhood portal, which gives local police a map with approximate locations of all the ring cameras in your in your jurisdiction, and so lets you private. request footage directly from the camera owners. Camera owners do need to consent, but you don't need a warrant to ask for footage. So you can ask, "Hey, I don't see. I'm not sure I have a problem with this, but that's why I'm I'm asking you guys." Um, they also are. Ring is very careful about. 
getting a non-disclosure from law enforcement. So the police have to sign a contract saying that they won't talk about this and they won't talk about that. That's and, right. And Amazon controls it. So it's right. kind of a disturbing thing. I don't know there's, about that. there's also on the Ring a neighbor's app, right. which I use. And I've noticed it's this. It's pretty great, actually, isn't it? Yeah, because it'll tell you like, oh, there was somebody stalking my neighborhood right. or there was a break in down the street. Although there... <laughs> And this is the motherboard points this out. Seems to be a little bit of an issue with racial profiling because these say, strangers not, tend people, to be black every time. Yeah, I was gonna say, are people a little overzealous in those little groups? I think there's a lot of time if you see it's in the middle of the night and a black guy's walking down your street, you post it. All right, on the, in this app is what you're saying, right? And that's not Ring's fault. That's humans. That's human. Yeah. So there was. I got invited to when I moved into the place where I was living in uh, Springfield, Missouri. I got an invite to one of those neighbor group things and apps, and so I signed. I think Nextdoor or whatever. So I signed up for it, got it, and that's what it ended up being every time. Was it's a lot oh, of nervous, suspicious Nellies. activity, and yeah. it's not suspicious activity, and nothing ever happened. Everything was fine. So it just ended up making me more anxious than it I needed to be. It makes you anxious. Yeah. Which That's just true. But, but Mike, to you mean like this syndrome. because you now you're traveling worldwide, right? And you use a ring on your Airbnbs. And I stuff. have done, and I probably will do in the future. And it's been really That's fascinating. That's a very so, valuable. Thing. Well, I, I, I would. I have this uh, mounting putty that I just stick it wherever I'm living. And so I did it in Mexico. I did it in Marseille. Really in intriguing That's places. Lit. And and it's it's um, the main reason is that when you're in an Airbnb and you're living around people who just are, they live there, they know you're a traveler mm -hmm. and everybody knows that you're a foreigner. You probably have cameras you're, and cash and all yep, this yeah. passports and stuff. Yeah. And so it's nice to know before I walk in that nobody is inside yeah. and I can prove that to myself. Right. Gotcha. I get the Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. But the other, the other thing is that you learn and, and this is fun. I, I recommend this as a hobby for everyone. Go to YouTube and search for ring video doorbell videos. Some of those a lot of crazy stuff happens. Some night. of those are hilarious. Strange <laughs> things happen. Did and I told you, Mike, about the one where it was a weird video. I wish I could find it. The guy um, licked the doorbell, that one? I saw the one licking yeah. the doorbell. That was really what? weird. <laughs> yeah. But then there was a nice uh, older woman who was arranging flowers on the person's doorstep. They, she had a little vase. She took some flowers, put them in the vase, got them all arranged, and then picked it up and left. Okay. And the person was going, what the hell is this? Why is this woman coming to my doorstep this to raise normal. flowers? <laughs> so she, like walks she posted it on the, on the neighborhood app, and the, her neighbor said, oh, that's the woman that's been stealing my flowers. Oh. So she cuts the flowers next door. Gets away from there, oh, man. arranges and puts them in the face and keeps on moving. Where this is she going is with these flowers? This kind I of thing, know. yeah, this kind of thing has always happened at night. And always. Who knew? Right. Who knew? Now we know. We we can track them. I I was the person who said I'll never have cameras. I don't, I think that makes you paranoid. I don't want to have cameras. I now have a ring doorbell. Yeah. I have. I just put another camera in on my house because Lisa woke up last night the other night saying I heard somebody on our deck, so I put a camera up there. Why not? Why not? I get it. If you if you have these threats and and have seen signs or whatever, I get it. But I don't have, spread I have a this Kylo. suspicion. What's a Kylo? The a Kylo dog, Ren, a hundred oh. pound mastiff <laughs> slash pit bull. That works pretty well. You know, it, yeah, that'll do. The but job. no, I, in all seriousness, I get it when that people put those things up. But that whole neighborhood thing, I I, mm -hmm. I can't really buy into that too much. I saw someone in the chat room, I believe it was Chumley, that was saying. They wonder if the those things are moderated. You know, are they? They're not really, and that's part of the problem, right? Is is, and I think it. I think it can lead to a mob mentality. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I at home, I'll take walks early in the morning or early or late at night, and I yeah, I have on orange right now, but most of the time I specifically put on orange or something bright when I go out to walk at night just because of stuff like that mm -hmm, that you're talking yeah. about you know and if i go and do a photo walk at night you're not gonna wear a hoodie i have i'll, I'll wear an orange hoodie yeah you but know, you're not I, gonna wear a black hoodie nope. i have i face. have colorful stuff in the trunk yeah. of my car does that help it does because yeah. you know especially if i go on a uh like a, a landscape walk through a nature trail or something people are jogging especially you don't want to surprise them. right they see and, me and, and you're big you're, you're, exactly. you're a big dude it would be a little scary right so yeah. they can see me in the distance and there's not going to be some type of excuse of i surprise them uh -huh. you know i By have to way, do it for them and i also do it for me for you, no man. i don't blame you, you know? i'm sad that you have to do that because mm -hmm. white people don't have to do that no nope. 
course, we got white faces. And, and I'm glad Micah doesn't wear a hoodie <laughs> because if he did, he would look like a hacker in the stock photo. Oh, yeah. Logs. Aren't they going to change that one of these days? No, the hackers sit there or I they also, use the, the burglar mask. I have a little complaint because we've hired two people. Both of them are over six foot. Jason's six foot eight. It's a problem. Jason's I'm tall. now the shorty in this operation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm under six foot. Shouty. But you still. Shouty. But if you, you start calling me shouty, shouty. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> But oh, like shawty, it. it's a party. But it's you your still birthday. have the voice. You are the voice. I'm the voice. Yes. But I'm the squatty little short voice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Not a good look. How about Turkey? This worries me a little bit. Here in the United States. Oh, the uh, country. I love Turkey. <laughs> yeah, <I'm so> <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sure. You got stuffing? You got mashed potatoes? Uh, no, the country of Turkey. Um, in the United scary. States, the Federal Communications Commission regulates broadcast. And that's reasonable because you're using a resource that's owned by the country, by all the people of the country, the, the airwaves, the mm -hmm. spectrum. And so they regulate that. They do not regulate podcasts. We are not regulated by the FCC. Fortunately. And I, well, you know, and we, you know, we're not swearing up a storm. We're not using the eight dirty words. We're not. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just joined us. It's new. It could happen. Surprise. John won't let you do that. But we're not, we, yeah. the government has no say in what we do. Right. right. Bloggers can say whatever they want. And I think on the on the balance, that's free speech. That's appropriate. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand why the FCC regulates broadcast spectrum. I understand why they don't regulate online. And that's a good thing. In Turkey, the radio and television watchdog, which is the RTUK, has now been given permission to have oversight over all online content, including streaming platforms like Netflix, wow. online news outlets. Uh, this, to me, is exactly the thing. And I could even see that happening in the U.S. where people over say, Netflix? no, no, we've got to control, yeah, we've got to control terrorism. It's because the Turkish government is moving towards authoritarianism. And has Erdogan, have been for yeah, a while. Yeah. Yeah. Wants to be a dictator yeah. and... Honest, obviously wants to control anti-Erdogan sentiment. Mm -hmm. And the internet is heavily censored in Turkey. Already. In my experience, yeah. yeah. The aim of this regulation, uh, says the regulation, is to establish the methods and principles to regulate the presentation and provision of radio, television, and on-demand broadcast services, the handing of broadcast licenses to media service providers, the granting of broadcast authorities to platform administrators, and the supervision of the broadcast in question. You have to get a license now to be a podcast, to do what we're doing wow. in Turkey. Wow. I mean, th this is um, this is part of a global trend where certain authoritarian rulers are looking to China and Russia as models for how they can, can uh, you know, Control. succeed in politics by controlling the media, controlling the dissidents, uh, all that stuff. So it's... Wow. You remember when, wow. when there were coups... In a country, in the old days, the first thing they do is take over the TV and radio station. Right? Right. You control the media, you control the broadcast media, you control, control what people learn about mm -hmm. the coup. <clears throat> yeah. But now you've got the internet. It's a lot harder to control it. Well, the, the, and, and these guys are amateurs compared to China. I mean, Ch China censors social media in real time. You type Winnie the Pooh into know. Weibo and it's got, it vanishes. Henry and I were in China in 2009, 10 yeah. years ago. It was the Uyghur revolt was happening, mm -hmm. uh, the Muslim minority in yep. China. We were watching CNN. Michael Jackson had just died. We were watching the funeral. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it goes black Yep. Mm. for three minutes and comes back because they were doing a story on the Ouija revolt, and yep. they just snip it out in real time. Yep. That was 10 uh, years ago. Yeah. I went to CES Asia uh, back in June, and that's my first time in China. Blew my mind as a content where, creator. Where, where in China was it? Shanghai. Yeah. Shanghai. It's a wild city, isn't yeah. it? Shanghai is pretty daggum cool. Yeah. Pretty yeah. daggum yeah. cool. But as a content creator, I struggled because yeah. you can't get to Facebook, I can't you get, get my to Twitter, stuff out. you can't get right. yeah. You know, that's that's part of my gig. I gotta get my stuff out. And people were people knew I was going, you know, because I got a scholarship to go. Thank you, CTA, for that. And well, that's cool. And people were looking forward to the content and it took a while to well, get this, it. Wait till I get home. Right. So, so I, I wrote a piece about this last week for uh, Computer World and IDG. Basically, people talk about the splinter net. And my contention is that the splinter net is a, just a fact of life. It's already here. And China is the poster child for that. I mean, if you, if you have a list of the top 20 services that people use on the internet, none of us have heard of any of them. Right. And if you take a, a top 20 list of our favorite places to go on the internet... They're, those They're are all blocked in China. Yeah. It's a different internet. The whole mm. experience is completely different. 
everything is different. The splinter net is real. And, and I think that, again, there are lots of countries that are trying to emulate China. Russia is the most aggressive in emulating China. But China is the gold standard in authoritarian and, and, and AI control of speech in real time and media, et cetera. And, you know, it's, it's problematic. We, 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 we need a stronger counter effect in the... Just for kicks and giggles, I was world. trying to connect to whatever, and I couldn't. And so I said I'd call up customer service just to see what was going to happen. <laughs> you know, and, In and, China. Yeah, just, just to see what was going to happen. And I was using, I believe, a former sponsor, ExpressVPN. They're still a sponsor? And uh, I was using that service, and the representative just told me straight out, Oh, you're using VPN? No, no, no. That's yeah. not allowed Can't here. Do it. Yeah, just like that. They recently banned <sighs> VPNs in Russia as well. You know, just in Russia, really? In Russia, yeah. It's pretty it's ballsy, illegal. and yeah. hey, whatever. I, I don't want that. Yep. <laughs> I don't yep. want that internet. No. Yep. no. <laughs> yeah. Facebook. Uh, this is the strangest move I've ever heard of. It's exclusive from <laughs> the information. Alex Heath writing. Facebook is going to change the name of the app Instagram to Instagram from Facebook. And of WhatsApp to WhatsApp from Facebook. Is that just another way of giving yourself a fancy LLC? I don't know what it is. You know, employees for the app, according to Heath, were recently notified about the changes, which come as antitrust regulators are examining Facebook's acquisition of both apps. Uh, and the move was met with surprise and confusion internally. Hmm. On the one hand, you might maybe there's customer research that says the that we should do this. On the other hand, you might just say this Mark Zuckerberg's ego saying, "Well, no, no, people think Instagram's independent. It's mine. It's one of the only ideas they've ever had that they didn't steal." <laughs> well, um, well, doesn't Audible a, do that as well? Or will Amazon do that with Audible? Uh, they 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 play it down more than than this implies. They did I, they did join your Audible account and your Amazon account. They did, and, and, and the yes, it's Audible and Amazon. Yeah, company. I want to say I've seen it on it's a banner or something. Yeah. But but I think th I think the larger scheme is they eventually they want all of these services to be called Facebook. Facebook. Period. That's exactly. what they're doing. Yeah. No. And this is an interim like move. <laughs> Exactly. The next step is take Instagram off completely. First thing they have to do is inform Instagram users that Facebook owns the company, which many don't know that. You know, they don't know that Facebook owns Instagram or WhatsApp. And so they need to introduce that idea and so that in the future they can just lump them all together. This is the big privacy thing that right. Zuckerberg got the so end much credit end for. Encryption. He's basically doing this big power play where he's going to become Weibo, right? He's going to become it's this. all one thing. Right. And you do, and in fact, it's the internet. Uh, it's the alternative it's the internet. internet. Places, it's the yeah. other internet. Just like AOL used yeah. to be the internet for right. some subset exactly. of people. Consider it's it. going to be the internet for some group of people. But I think this is going to be very unappealing to Instagram users, for starters. I think WhatsApp less so, but Instagram, they, they don't... Yeah, those Instagram influencers. Seems risky. Coconut all, the, all those kids there. with the coconuts. I mean, I this is not going to... It's like Facebook's for grandpa. The face, but also, <laughs> I think the Facebook brand is tarnished right now, isn't it? Yeah. This is it not is. a good time and, to say, oh, yeah, we're part of that. And that's but, why I was kind of wondering, is it a way for Facebook to say... You think we're bad, but we we brought you Instagram. Yeah, we still got or some we fire. We have Instagram. We <laughs> right. think you think we're bad, but we you know. So it's like Twitter saying like, now with more Nazis, it's just <laughs> it's just bad. Hold on, is it it's just, bad it's, positioning. No, I think so. I think so from that perspective. But if Facebook's trying to make itself seem better, then maybe that's. I, I agree that it's like an interim thing, but it's not like it doesn't help Instagram and it doesn't have help WhatsApp to to have, no, to have that, that latched on. Remember that the founders of both companies have left mm -hmm. as Mark has slowly asserted his power and mm -hmm. the people who are still there from both companies are kind of apparently according to this article upset yeah yeah they don't they don't want to be sucked into the Borg one of us resistance <laughs> is futile one of us uh, and I think you nailed it Mike when you said that's yeah. the first stage in just getting rid of those yep. separate brands entirely that's which right. also may be an incidental benefit makes it harder to break them up right right because there is some pressure from the federal government to say well maybe we should investigate this and maybe they should be forced to divest yeah well but it's facebook now yep huh, it's mm. facebook now what are you gonna do i don't think regulators are that stupid mm. actually i take that back wait a minute, show wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hold on our show today brought to you by last pass you use last pass yes i do you use last pass i do you use yes. last pass i have no idea what my password four is out of four twit panelists <laughs> recommend 
Yeah, I don't know what my passwords are either. I know the main LastPass password. That's all you need to know. I don't know Squad. One password, your LastPass password, and it does the rest. In fact, it generates long, strong, Mm -hmm. unique passwords for every time you sign. It's the first thing I install on any new phone, any new laptop, Mm -hmm. any new computer. It's kind of the key to my whole life. The number one most preferred password manager at home and work. And they are now doing something really exciting. They're, they're kind of thinking about the future of authentication, mm-hmm. right? Pass, well, look, first of all, passwords, terrible idea. Nobody, oh, crazy, right? Part of the reason we have problems with passwords is because everybody has to remember a whole bunch. You got to make them easy to remember, same but then they're not secure. It's just crazy. They use the same one over and over. Mm-hmm. Let's get rid of passwords. So LastPass is now, they're introducing this in their enterprise app. You guys, by the way, because you're now Twit employees, you'll be using the LastPass Enterprise and you'll see these new features before you see uh, before you see them in the uh, uh, rest of the versions. I think it's really exciting. It's a new business lineup. Nice. So one thing you're going to do is single sign-on. So w- here's the challenge for our IT department, for administrators, for uh, the boss of any business, is you want to make your stuff more secure. You're giving employees the keys to the kingdom, the keys to the bank accounts, the websites, everything. So you want to make it secure. You don't want them to put it on a Post-it note on the, on the monitor. But at the same time... Employees resist because it's less convenient. It's a pain in the butt. That's right. Wouldn't it be cool if you could make it more secure and more convenient? And that's where single sign-on is really cool. LastPass Enterprise is going to include single sign-on for 1,200 plus integrated apps, SAML integrated apps, and more coming all the time, each with its own getting started guide, so it'll be very easy for your employees. Single sign-on means they don't even need a password anymore. They, they go to a site, they log in or start the process. It pops up on their phone. They say, yes, that's me. They're in. That's more secure than a password. Mm-hmm. They're also adding multi-factor authentication. We know two-factor is great. MFA is even better because it not only leverages, you know, a second factor, maybe an authenticator, but it actually leverages your biometrics, like your face, your fingerprint, and contextual factors, your location, your IP address. So it can verify with a variety of signals that you really are who you say you are. And again, no trouble to the user. It's convenient. It's great for admins. They get an easy-to-manage dashboard that lets you know who's using what apps, what logins there are. It is This is kind of the holy grail, which is both more secure and more convenient. It's the new LastPass Enterprise. And Leo, um, in case people are worried that this contextual information is going to become a barrier, it isn't. I travel all over the world, and it never confronts me because it's like, oh, you're in a different country. It knows. It works. It works. And it doesn't give me a hard time about that, which I'm kind of surprised because I would expect there to be problems because I travel a lot more than than most people, and that was pretty amazing. But see, they learn what your patterns are, right? Exactly. They know that you're a traveler, right? right? If I did that, then maybe it would... Give me an alert, right? The, so yeah. you're in China, really? The, the other data point that's really interesting is I've had a, an account for a long time, an individual account, and my son Kevin got a family account and invited us to it. Nice. And the switch over from individual to family it's was very simple. Simple. Same yeah. thing to enterprise. In fact, you guys all have personal accounts. When you join the Twit Enterprise, you can it's, it's not a merge because it's still private. It's your personal account. But with one login, you get access to both the enterprise and the personal, which makes it very so. easy. It's really nice. Well, that's one of the reasons we use LastPass Enterprise at Twit. The other one is because we had an engineer who posted all the passwords on a website. But that's a story I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to get into at this time. Maybe that's where your Bitcoin password is. Oh, oh wow. man! <laughs> <laughs> LastPass bridging the gap between passwords and identity by making access and authentication simple and secure for both IT and end users. Join the thousands of businesses who have signed up for LastPass and are loving it and trusting it, and we're one of them. LastPass dot com slash twit please use it It, for your own safe self uh lastpass.com slash twit we thank lastpass so much they've been a great sponsor we're going to be going to boston in in october to do an authentication summit steve gibson's going to come out we're going to have lastpass and CISO. we're going to have some security experts it's going to be open to the public stay tuned for information about that but the lastpass authentication summit because i think authentication is the key the fundamental issue here right how do yeah. you prove you are who you say you are right and passwords are the worst possible way mm-hmm. to do it right we know that speaking of trust and, and authentication i was able to meet miss wendy nather last year she's she, great she came to charlotte she's the CISO of a duo security duo. she's great mm-hmm. yeah i love Wendy. yeah she's, she's awesome. yeah she's a wonderful person we had her at our uh, capital one event in uh, south by southwest yeah 
Uh, these are a couple of little tidbits to wrap up the show with. Apparently, live streaming of funerals is a thing. Yeah. It has started with weddings. Um, <laughs> nothing much to say here except... It doesn't sound very exciting. Well, it's a little slow. <laughs> They're not very entertaining. <laughs> I'm just trying I, to... I, I don't know if the signal is stuck or if oh my that's... God. Oh, but he's moving. <laughs> yeah. I want no part of this. They got beautiful pipe organ music. Uh, but so if, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of times you have a funeral, you have a wake, you can't get to it. I, there's a lot of wakes I've missed or funerals I've missed because yeah. I'm stuck. Yeah. It'd be nice to be able to just kind of visit online. I don't know. Just sign I, it online. It feels kind of like, oh, it's yes, I'm visit. that one person who can be there. So will you please set up this whole live stream for me so I can, I don't know, like <laughs> look over the top of everybody. Yeah, like, I don't know what you're going to see. Running? But apparently <laughs> funeral homes, it's like a big thing. Now. Well, I guess if the funeral home takes care of it all, then maybe, because I don't, I would like... I would rather just not be there at all than to put the family out to make sure that I could be there over live stream. I would feel really bad about that. Could you just hold up your phone so I yeah. can see? Yeah, just FaceTime me in, Uncle please. Joe. Just make sure you don't hit the button where they put, like, cat ears oh and stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> it really ruined the moment. Do you think that works? Like on a <laughs> Only one way to find out, Leo. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. What would you like at your funeral? What What would you like? What I face? want the I want the tongue that comes out with Blah. the puppy ears. Yeah. <laughs> the rainbow vomit is that yeah. what it's called? <laughs> rainbow vomit. Oh, you know, I mean, that they, service costs fifty. They, they really extra. won't mind. That's a little more. <laughs> That's a little more. Uh, Spotify subscriber base. Wow, one hundred eight million paid users. 232 million monthly users. We thought for a while Apple was just going to eat yeah. Spotify's lunches. They were coming on strong, but uh, Spotify crickets. is now twice as big as Apple Music. And deserves to be. It's like so good. Mm -hmm. They are Spotify. also, uh, they've apparently, they're in their sixth round of lab label negotiations. They have to, you know, this is where Spotify's business yeah. model is tough. Right. They have to get the four big music labels to say, okay, right. they've got two of the four already. 13 years has been going on. It's typically a long, drawn-out process, according to Spotify. They pay the most to artists, right? I hope they do. I think they pay the most. I hope they do, because that's one thing. I want artists to get compensated. I don't want to use a streaming service and feel like I'm ripping the artist mm -hmm. off. Right. Uh, do you, I bet you do, uh, occasionally buy a CD, even though you don't need to, just to I support do. the artist? I yeah. haven't bought a CD in a while. Well, or, but a, I will, or a digital download. But I will buy a digital. Buy, you'll buy a disc, mm -hmm. buy a song or an mm -hmm. album. I will buy a digital. I will do that just as a, almost a, a donation. Yeah. Because right. you don't need For exactly my favorite artists, absolutely. Yeah. I did that in Cuba because the band actually didn't have digital versions online. They mm. just had the CD. That was it. But yeah, oh, I've wow. The, the artist, though. This is interesting. So um, Pandora has the highest per play royalty rate. Uh, YouTube has the worst per stream payouts. Uh, but Pandora. Napster is the king of streaming music payouts. <laughs> really? Yeah, sir? Who would have thought that? Wow. Uh, and then Tidal, oh, sweet Tidal, yeah. uh, is is uh, second, I think, in payouts. I thought about Tidal a couple is, of years ago, but I had Tidal a data over? cap back then. No, it's still there. It's there. In fact, when I installed Plex, that was the yeah, music service they Plex. partnership said. with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. And I've considered it because I'm I'm a Google Music subscriber. I'm like one of three people. No, I was. Oh, so you use one too? Kevin is too. Okay. There's the three right but there. I, don't I, ever <laughs> kill. You know what? You don't ever want to kill it. I killed it the other day. I thought I got YouTube. Apple. I got Amazon. I killed it. YouTube. YouTube. No All of a sudden, I'm getting ads on my YouTube. Oh. I went what? Man, one time I forgot to change the like the expired card in my Google I'm gonna Music. I'm going to pay for it, man. I, and all of my YouTube videos were ads. having ads. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I have to watch ads like an animal? <laughs> what is this, a podcast? Uh, Apple I, Music I, is in third place, I, I've by the considered way. Spotify because I hear how good yeah. this algorithm is, but my problem so you guys is are I want to migrate. And so. Apple Music, Spotify and Apple yeah. Music. Just Spotify for me. I want to migrate my stuff from Google, but I don't necessarily have a tool. Um, Spotify doesn't do the thing that Google and uh, Apple do, which allows you to upload your collection All right. and make that part of the streaming service. I don't think there's a way I to want do that, that on Spotify. There's some obscure music there that There might I be have. some services, that, you, I, but I, some of them are kind of sketchy. Sketchy. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 I'll pass. We'll talk after the show. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, a new bill would ban <laughs> autoplay videos... And endless scrolling. What? What? As Congress? Well, don't you have something better to do? He's always doing this, though. Oh, it's Josh Hawley. Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, Snapchat. What are those things called? 
young people? Are you out there? Wait. No, no one's saying anything. Hard so yeah, heads, they know. Streaks. Yes, yeah, yeah, streaks. Thank you. <laughs> These are Snapchat what they so-called dark patterns. Josh Hawley just discovered dark patterns, basically. <laughs> yeah. And well, no, he's been discovering. He keeps making these stupid bills that no one pays any attention to because he wants to make sure. He's from your neck of the woods. He's yes. a Missouri. Don't center. remind me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> when we t we talked about this on uh, Tech News Weekly, and at that point, the chat was saying that in Missouri they don't teach you science. They uh, they I can't remember. There's three things. And while the science part is true, they don't there. Um, what do you mean? They don't teach you science. I'm kidding. I'm no kidding. This is, that was the joke. Um, <laughs> now that he's in California, he can like have all these yeah. slamming. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I love Missouri. Uh, but this guy's not great. Uh, so, yeah, Howley, he's been wanting to just completely destroy social media for a while, ever since he's gotten I'm not his against spot. his aversion to dark patterns because they Agreed. are really loathsome, and I see them all over the place. He, But it, should it be a bill? The Smart Media Addiction Reduction Technology Act. I mean, Social Media Addiction Reduction Technology Act, which is smart. smart. I appreciate smart the premise of it. But but at the same time, it, it, it does sound a little asinine. You know, every now and then we do need to put the social media away. It, uh, can, you can't deny that there is this kind of addiction model, though, right? Yes. And that they are playing on our kind of unconscious needs Absolutely. to get us to use but more. he wants mm -hmm. to ban facebook and twitter from being able to give you a stream of stuff and that, that's what those that's right. what they do the that's theory right. being you just sit there and look and look and look and you never start. and you only have a couple so. months to comply if this were to be as gone filthy it. as silly. twitter is it's a great news source yep <laughs> filthy a news, that's yes. a i like that adjective for that <laughs> it's a filthy dirty <laughs> news a, source you filthy now i want to source. rejoin that sounds good <laughs> it is a great news source because it happens heck the twitter Twitter gets it before the news gets it, you know? Absolutely. Have you ever used Lowcast? Lowcast.org. Negative. Watch broadcast oh, TV this. for free. You have to tell it where you are. If you are in one of these cities, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, Houston, Dallas, Denver, Every, Chicago. Everywhere but Clemson, South Carolina. <laughs> Weirdly, Sioux Falls and Rapid City <laughs> or San Francisco you can watch local TV for free. Does they say, it count even though, like here, even though it's not quite in San Francisco? Yeah. Oh, nice. It says, uh, donate. We need your support, but they don't charge you. Does this sound legal? I mean, like if it's just the free down, streams, yeah. then... I can, I can, there's an app for Roku. There's an app for Apple TV. Apple TV's approved it. So we don't have to install the little three-inch antennas outside? At, I like that what, idea. <laughs> what company was no, they, that? They had all the antennas together, you know, like a single place, and they were getting the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That what was, company a was crazy. That? It was like Lowcast. It was, <sighs> it was uh, somebody in the chat room. Though. Well, so here's the deal. They're being sued... By four major broadcast uh, networks. Of course. <laughs> but did you know who funds Aerial. Lowcast? Aerial. Yeah, Aerial. 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 You know who funds Thank Lowcast? You, no. AT and T. Huh. Wait a minute. I mean, aren't they just doing what I would do if I had an antenna outside my house? Yeah, but, but you're not, not allowed to put it on the internet <laughs> and let everybody watch. That's exactly what they're doing. This is so convenient. And what I find, I mean, I understand it in Aerial, and a lot of people try to do this, and. I mean, the, the the problem is the all these broadcasters are used to be free floating through the air. So right. what's the difference, right? Um, and they had ads, right? The but ads. then they got money from the cable companies plus the ads, and now they don't want to be free right. over the air. They want you to pay for them right. somehow. Right. Um, so the networks are pissed. They like that extra beer money a month. But. AT and T is funding this. Baffles me. Let me ask like, you. What is their what game? Are they doing? Let, yeah, let me ask a question. Why would anybody want to watch local TV? True. I'll tell you why. Football. <coughs> uh, Mr. Football. <laughs> yeah. Again, I say, why would anybody <laughs> want to? watch it? No, but NFL football. Lisa can't watch it uh, on the internet, but she could watch it if she had an antenna. Doesn't, we don't have an antenna. But here. doesn't YouTube offer? You have to pay sports? for it. Forty dollars a month. Yeah, you pay for those this services. Is free. I, I pay for um, Hulu's live version. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm able to see my squad down in. And if small, I had an know, antenna in San Francisco, I could see all of this anyway. When you say squad, you're talking about Congress people. Or are you talking Wait, about my squad? <laughs> Did you know, people, he's the fifth member of the squad? Oh, man. <laughs> we need uh, to talk, Mr. Elgin. Hey, thanks to Ajit Pai. It's our Ajit Pai alert. He's in the news again. Once again, he is, the FCC has ordered cities and towns to 
Wait for it. Stop <laughs> regulating cable broadband. Wow. So the FCC effectively has said, we're not going to regulate it. None of our business. But you better not either. <laughs> Many cities and towns have written to the FCC saying, don't. <laughs> Please. Don't. <laughs> don't do that. Um, one of the things that will happen is funding for local channels, which is often a requirement for the franchise, mm -hmm. will be eliminated. So those local public access stations oh, no. say goodbye. Uh, plus, you know the uh, FCC says, "Well, this uh, the, we're gonna this uh, this uh, funding these local stations damages the ability of the nation's broadband providers to extend their networks to communities without highs." In other words, well, we're gonna do this so they'll extend it. But uh, Jessica Rosenworcel, who is one of the FCC commissioners who voted against it, said, "If you go through the text of this decision, you'll not find a single commitment." made to providing more broadband service in remote communities. There is no enforceable obligation to expand capacity. There is no agreement that any savings from this action is pushed to a new network deployment. Basically, it's another give back to the big broadband providers, to Comcast, to Which Cox, is what AgitPi is all about. Mm -hmm. There will, I'm sure, be a lawsuit, but I just wanted to bring you... Bring yep. your awareness to this. But here, sadly... Any day now. Here is the most important... Money, 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 money. ...and final story for the week. Ninja is leaving Twitch... <gasps> Everyone gasp. ...to stream exclusively on Thank Mixer. You. Hey, who's Ninja? Oh, shut oh, up! Yeah, you know who <laughs> Ninja <fire>. is. <laughs> I knew he would make it through the show. He's drinking. Didn't even last two oh. hours. No, no. The reason I mean, you don't know who Ninja is because you <laughs> wisely will not let Jacob and Isaiah play Fortnite. Wait a minute. Do you know what for? Do you know who Ninja wait a is, did, kids? Did you see his mouth just dropped. He's he know, like, wait he a minute. Did, yeah, <laughs> what? He is the superstar of Fortnite. <laughs> he is one of the great Fortnite players. Don't tell them that a 16 year old won a three million dollar purse in a Fortnite competition the other day. Don't tell them that either. <laughs> okay. Don't get your hopes up, hardheads. <laughs> <laughs> Parents used to be able to tell their kids, you can't play video games, yeah, you'll never you get a job. Play video games for a living. <laughs> Ninja, is, I guess this is, I don't know. He's So he was huge on Twitch, right? He's one of the most popular stars on Twitch. This is a big deal if you're in this space. Right. Mixer is Microsoft's streaming service. Struggled a little bit, especially compared to Twitch or even YouTube. Ninja... Released a video. I've been holding on to this for quite some time. I'm just super excited to let everyone know I'll be streaming on Mixer full time right now. He's and I am honestly at a loss for words. I'm freaking out in the best ways. Let's all go have some coconut. He's he's, yeah. he's the Howard Stern of gaming. He's going to a, a place ah, where he will dominate completely. You're right. And, and just he's super excited place. about how much money Microsoft's probably paying in. Exactly. How many, how many, how many exciting. commas are in that paycheck? Right. You know? Microsoft money. <laughs> Yeah, he after Minecraft, yeah. So Ninja is, has been on the cover of ESPN magazine. Why? Ninja has been featured <laughs> okay, on the... Okay, okay. ESPN has yeah. a magazine? Yeah, on the Ellen DeGeneres show. This week, he's appearing at Lollapalooza. To do what? what? In Chicago. Does he, does he DJ? I don't know. He plays, he sometimes plays with Marshmallow, who's a DJ. Oh, so Marshmallow is also a Twitch person? Name. Yeah, Marshmallow plays Fortnite. Okay. Marshmallow's pretty good, actually. They won the team competition. I bet that. you're actually Marshmallow. No okay. one knows who Marshmallow is. Do they play for IOI? Wouldn't that be funny? Is that would be funny because you're always talking about getting like we're moonlighting as Marshmallow. Blumped or what is it that you Only say when you land reference. from the bus and you get <laughs> offed immediately? Yeah. Smeared. 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 Creamed. Yeah. Blasted. <laughs> Oh, speaking of blasted, is there any more of that stuff left? <laughs> I, uh, I, am th I am thrilled that you guys were here today. What a lot of fun. Mike Elgon, I love you. I miss you. Aww. When do you hit the road again? Uh, a couple of weeks. We head back to uh, Spain. Wow. And we're going we're gonna to be in Europe for a couple of months. Let's give a big yeah. plug to uh, Chatterbox. Chatterbox. Um, this is the DIY smart speaker that anyone can program. I'm I'm having some trouble right now, Kevin, because I went to Indiegogo, searched for Chatterbox, and I got a band named Chatterbox. Wait, wait a minute. HelloChatterbox.com. Hello Chatterbox there it is. Look at that. See if you are uh, if you're worried about Amazon's Echo, if your kids uh, are treating Echo like a human being because they don't understand the technology, if you want them to understand a little bit more and be a little more private, 
Look at Chatterbox. Oh. First of all, it's not listening unless you hit the big yellow button on the top. Kids can build Chatterbox, can program Chatterbox. Chatterbox has its own language even kids can use. It's such a cool project. Dab. What up. about adults? Can adults also make chatterboxes? They can. I want one. There's a huge number of people who, when he did the Kickstarter campaign, just wanted to build it for themselves, and it's a great idea. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. I uh, I think we should have a little craft day at Twit where yes. we get a bunch of chatterboxes and we. It reminds me of Bemo from. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. From Adventure Time. Thank you. Oh, I mean that was the influence. Mm. What's mm. cool is like uh, lots and lots of kids in Silicon Valley have tried this. And they just absolutely love it. And you can Kids use it with a Chromebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So web-based programming interface. That's really nice. Oh. So support uh, Mike's son, Kevin, and the Chatterbox, and do a favor to your kids. Teach them a little bit of technology. That's what's up, man. And how, yeah. and how these things work. I think it's awesome. Chatterbox, the DIY assistant that you can teach. Hello, Chatterbox.com. Mike Elgin, gastronomad.net, if That's you want right. to get on the... Gastronomic. Come join train. us. Oh, I wanted to say something about the, that bottle of wine I gave you in Morocco. Two of the people on that Morocco trip were huge Leo fans, huge Twit fans. Tom and Francois. Tom and Francois. We were there you. when we got this. I salute you with the labelless black bottle that he expects yes. me to drink. Yes. <laughs> it's part of my plan. Well, I trust you implicitly, Mike. If this was in that. Charlotte, that would have been a jug and not a bottle. Oh, <laughs> the moonshine. <laughs> Thank you to Micah Sargent. Really always a pleasure. Look forward to Tuesday. It's going to be iOS Today, you and me. What are we talking about Tuesday? We are know. talking about Smat Chappin. Smat Chappin. Wicked yeah. Smat. Wicked Smat Chappin. <laughs> love doing the... I think, you know, I got a checkup from my doctor the other day. He said, I love that Micah guy. So you listen? He said, yes. <laughs> so listen? my physician listens to iOS Today. That's wonderful. We'll yeah, have to awesome. give him a shout out on the yeah, show. Yeah, that's probably why he gave me that really big shot. <laughs> he said, I love that. Ow! Ow! Uh, anything else? Chihuahua.coffee. Yeah, Chihuahua.coffee. And also, I'm going to give a shout out to the folks here. Uh, follow twit.tv on Instagram. Uh, they're doing a really good job of putting together videos uh, and yep. Instagram stories all the time. Instagram on Facebook, you mean? Yes, Instagram yeah, by Facebook. <laughs> Go there. Go to Instagram by Facebook. Look up twit.tv and follow and check out the stories that are always getting updated in the posts as well. Um, I was wondering, because every time I come into the studio, there's a camera crew following me. Yes. I was wondering what they were doing with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Instagram.com <laughs> slash twit.tv slash by Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Masako is great. Uh, Jerry is great. And uh, there's a few other people. And I think actually at photo was here today, Michael. Uh, the legendary. Look, legendary Michael Donald. <laughs> so you can catch his pictures on Twitter at photo. At photo. He's got the best Twitter handle That's in the awesome. world. That's um, awesome. Yeah, look, look at these. A lot of pictures. Today. There we are. And right some now. video, They're, too. That's how fast they work <laughs> wow. on Instagram. Thank you for helping me uh, plug them. I, I don't ever do that. And you see there's a lot of videos, too. Yes. That's and nice. they're using uh, Instagram TV, I think it's called. IGTV. Thank you. IGTV. See, I don't know what the oh. youths do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's an unboxing that I did of my Chihuahua mat from the Post oh, very funny. Local mats. I really enjoyed that. He's un unboxing a mat. But it has pictures of your dogs, so yeah. that's pretty cool. It's got Henry and Missy on that's it. Great. It's hilarious. <laughs> and we want to welcome our newest uh, member of the Twit family. It's so great to have the aunt. We love Aunt Pruitt. We always have. He's always been great on all of our shows. And to get you in-house with us. And Thank I'm you. so excited about your energy uh, and your creativity. You're going to be such a great part of the I Twit team. I can't wait to yeah. get started. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're growing. We're getting bigger. We're yes. getting better. I'm really excited. <laughs> uh, and... and uh, <laughs> We met your wife last night, and she said, oh, finally, I." you said, can I go to work for Twitch? She said, you mean the guy with the white hair? Yes, yeah, she did say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. His boss. <laughs> with the white hair. We do Twit every, every Sunday afternoon, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, 21.30 UTC. If you want to stop by and watch it live, twit.tv slash live has live audio and video streams. 
Yeah, we're on Mixer and Twitch. So take that, Ninja. You can, <laughs> you can also get it. Uh, oh, if you're watching live, do join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv, with a bunch of other great people watching live at the same time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, man, I have to thank, we had the biggest studio audience we've had in a long time. I don't know if they knew you were going to be here or what. but I tend uh, to have that effect on TV. Neil and Gemma from the U.K., <laughs> uh, Mache from Boston, Ferdinand from New York City, Ashley and Mike from New York City, Zach from Knoxville, uh, Mick and Sydney from Ohio. We had Ben and Julia from Petaluma and Chicago, respectively. We had Mike and Nancy from Spokane Valley. Uh, Igor and Joanna from uh, Santa Rosa, all visiting today. If you want to be in studio, love to have you. All you have to do is email tickets at twit.tv. We'll, uh, we'll put a seat out for you. Uh, and uh, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Of course... The most popular way to watch a show or listen is on demand, and that's because it's a podcast. It makes it easy to do anytime at your leisure. In fact, I know this show's so long, a lot of people spread it out through the week. That's fine with me. Just go to twit.tv. You can download a copy there, or best thing to do, get your podcast application, fire it up, and subscribe. And that way, you'll get the show the minute it's available tonight, just in time for your Monday morning commute. Twit.tv is our website. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Now, time to uh, say goodbye, but it's going to be a lot of fun going forward. I can't oh. wait. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Another twit is in the can. Bye-bye. Wow. Yay.